there's a buck. I smell it. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. Sick Michael Jackson is backing up traffic. Cops looking for anything pornographic. Pictures and videos packed in boxes. They even took the big wig from the whiz. Neverland Red smells like monkeys and llamas. Little boys wearing those trapdoor pajamas. Michael would secretly watch when they pee. Then haul them up to that damn thinking tree. Teddy bears wearing tricolored vibrators. Underwood panties packed in the dumb waiters. Licorice gumdrops and Superman rings. Those are a few of his sick, freaky things. Michael Jacko, he's a wacko. He's going to jail. Will this wrong be righted? Will he be indicted? Put his Ferris wheel no. on sale. Not a chance. 10 at 560 WQM. Happy Monday to you. Okay, time to get back to serious, right? Isn't it time to get yeah, back to right, business? whatever, sure. No? Well, when the hell do we ever do that? When are we going to get like back to uh, serious, uh, back to uh, terra firma? January 2nd, 2004. So Hillary Clinton had her uh, PR uh, trip, her photo op, upstaged. Hillary went to a swiller, went over to Afghanistan and to Iraq. And before she could make it to Iraq, there was uh, W was there upstaging her with a photo op of his own. And I love all these so-called pundits. Oh, and it was so sincere, and he was so concerned for the troops, and he was showing blah, 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 blah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> By the way, there's three more Americans dead since he left. I just mentioned that in passing, three yep. more American kids. But they got In a war troopers. that was all based on lies, but nobody wants to talk about that. It just, it's just mind-boggling. But I'm not going to get upset about it. Just like Muff told me this morning, the paycheck's clear. That's all you need to know is the, you know, here comes the bunny, and there goes your money. That's all you need to know. Just keep shoveling away. Got some bad news, though. Besides the three more Americans that died, and then, of course, the seven Spaniards and the two. Who were the other two from uh, where? Japan. Ah. And, of course, a whole bunch of Iraqi. The Iraqi scum, like that uh, fax we had last week. That was a crank fax. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yes. Superstar of the 1920s, dead. And you didn't even know who the hell this was. I can't no, believe you. Some You're slipping. Lard coated. Gertrude Ederly, who was the toast of America and Europe in 1926. Don't you remember that? Oh, yeah, like it was just yesterday. Just yesterday, it seems. Uh, became the first woman to swim the English Channel. Died Sunday at 97. She died? That's plenty old enough, believe me. 97. I think 90 is old enough. She died? <laughs> what are you laughing about? No, nothing, nothing. You wouldn't like to make it to 90 in pretty I'll, decent health? I'll take health? it. I'll take it. I'll I'll take it right now. If I could, like, sign a contract mm -hmm. and have, uh, you know, the gods of death or whatever the hell it is just say, okay, you right. can make it till 90. I would say, okay. Okay. That with, sounds reasonable to me. She, she made it to 97. There. She had spent the last several years living at the Christian Health Care Center in Wyckoff, New Jersey, Wackoff, New Jersey, about 25 miles northwest of New York City, said Martin Ward, whose wife is one of Edderly's ten surviving nieces and nephews. How do you like that? She was the first woman to swim the English Channel, and... She died? Now, why would you want to swim the English Channel? Just like you'd go over Niagara Falls in a barrel, just to show everybody you could do it, right? Right, look what I can do. Yeah, I'm in a Guinness Book of Records, and now she's dead. We got two polls for you today. Now, your poll that you took on Friday, i got to be honest with you. Yeah. And I can't blame you for this one. It's just uh, well, the audience... You might, it must have been the goody two-shoes crowd. Maybe the Thanksgiving turkey was still... Because hey. turkey does make you tired and affects right. your mind. You Dopes know? you up. I was and not only that, but when you consider that on Thursday and probably with leftovers on Friday, these people had eaten gigantic tubs and tubs of food, tons of uh, crap. You know what I'm saying? All the yeah. crap you can unwrap. That's it. Oh, by the way, he wasn't here this morning because he had to work a football game again last night that we carried on QAM. <laughs> God. 1,122 votes on George's poll. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it was just a dumb poll like the one I took on Thursday. It was just something. How did my restaurant poll come out, by the way? The worst fast food joint? Who won? McDonald's. Oh, get out. I, get out of I town. McDonald's is the worst fast food restaurant? No. Worse than Burger King? No. No chance. But that's what they said. Right. What Because their have? taste is in their tush. Well, on Friday, if you think that poll was bad, the only reason I did that poll, by the way, is because Eric had to like go somewhere and uh, have several feedings. So the poll had to be in and complete before he left. And then George got even with Eric over the weekend by not faxing him any bedtime story, <laughs> which uh, was good. That's right. You could have come into the station and faxed him That's all right, the bedtime stories. What's wrong with you? And use the computer here. 
Anyway, what is the most important thing in life, George asked on uh, Friday? 1,122 people voted. Good health, 272. That is the right answer. Congratulations. Oh! Let's hear it for the audience. They got this one right. The rest of them, though, sucked. <laughs> no, all the rest of them are all screwed up. Right. I mean, if you don't have good health, all the other ones on here are useless. They're meaningless. What if it's medium bad health, though? No, good health. Like roids. Like who? Roy! Oh, roids. Roids. <laughs> Good Health 272, Family 233. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. Aww. That's so silly. Some people the, might the, have a you nice know, The old though. cliche about blood is thicker than water and all that. It's a pile of crap. You know, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your relatives. You can't pick your parents. You can't pick your aunts and uncles. Right. You can't pick your nieces and nephews, your brothers-in-law, your in-laws. You can't pick any of those things. It's just crap happens. Well, some people might actually have a nice family. Yeah. All of them? No, not all those people. Well, there you go. So just because somebody's related to, to you doesn't mean, okay, but they said 233, plus it was Thanksgiving weekend. My mm. God, that's the time you're going to say crap like that, even though you don't believe it. Love, 154. <laughs> say love is the most important thing in life. Oh, man. To survive, now this one didn't belong under in the first place because it kind of makes all the other ones moot. 125. Yeah. That that doesn't belong in those, a poll like this. Those are the low expectation people. Oh. Money, 102. Now we're starting to get a little bit warmer. That would be my number three choice. Making a difference, 75. What a, what a politically correct bunch of assholes you had on this poll, man. What a bunch of schmucks. Oh. God. A good buzz, 57. A good buzz. Buzz this. Sex, 53. That would have been number two, of course, in my poll. Sex, number two, and uh, money, number three. Friends, 32. See, why are his family more important right. than friends? And you choose your friends, your family, you just uh, fall into it, okay? And, and you can't choose that. The difference is so extreme. Jesus, and freebies, 19. I mean, this is the most dishonest poll in the history of we. How many of these we taken? How many thousand? Right. 30, man. And this has got to be the, mo the most blatant act of dishonesty the South Florida audience has ever come through with. In uh -huh. fact, it's almost the reverse order, to be correct, other than the good health. Everyone's that wives were watching them. Freebies 19 in South Florida. Right. I'm surprised freebies didn't beat out good health. Even if you're like on your deathbed, they would still take the freebies. Pack some sweet and low in the sack. Put it in my <laughs> box. Bury me with all the freebies. Bury me with the dill pickles, you bastards. Yeah. So this poll, I mean, pretty good response considering. We got two polls for today. Now the first one, I know you're not going to be interested in, but the beast kind of like uh, got me excited about this on Thursday. Well, the beast don't get me too excited. The good part about his performance is he shut up. He didn't say too much, and then noon to one on Thursday we played bits here, so he uh, or whatever the hell it was, eleven to noon. Here's our first poll. I know you're going to get this one wrong too, but we'll have some some names probably called in for this or not. Who do you think was the most exciting athlete ever to play for a South Florida team? I've only got four choices here so far. I don't care about sports. That's always got to be on there because we have a lot of people in this audience who are just like George. Well, almost. They don't. They just don't give a flying crap about sports. And let me give you a little advice. I'm going to give you two pieces of advice today. Number one, don't ever go to Montreal. I'll explain why momentarily. Okay. And number two, um, sports as you become older becomes much less important. They're just games. You know? No. Not that I didn't no, love the no. Patriots. The Patriots, great the goal line stand there at the end. Nice going, Tommy boy. Oh! Patriots and Bill Belichick, man, they're unbe unbeatable. Take and then that. I see the Dolphins pulled one out of their ass on uh, Thursday, just coming out of nowhere and crushing the overrated Cowboys. That was amazing. You paid it. And, of course, the Leafs won their fifth in a row last night, so what's not to like, right? But it's not as important as it used to be. As you get older, you realize that some of those other things on your list are a little bit more important than ball games. Except, of course, at QAM, where we have a lot of neurotic uh, jock lickers. Anyway, who do you think was the most exciting athlete ever to play for a South Florida team? I don't care about sports. Pavel Bure, Dan Marino, or Jay Fiedler? Now, the reason I added Jay Fiedler Oy. is because after that game on, because there's so many phonies out there in mm -hmm. South Florida that he'll get some votes. You'll see. Now, poll number two, which I rarely give them both at the same time, which will start around, around noon. But I'm going to give it out to you now. In what city in the world do the highest percentage of very ugly people live? I don't think I worded that well. That's okay. That's fine. In what city in the world do the highest percentage of very ugly people live? Montreal. Now, it's very hard to bat a 1,000, to bat 100%, but in Montreal, they're batting 100%. There are nothing but ugly people, which I felt pretty much at home there myself. In fact, when I arrived, they said, oh, you're perfect for Montreal, eh? <laughs> no, seriously, because uh, they're, they're everybody there, the young people are ugly, the teenagers are ugly, the young adults are ugly, the middle-aged people are ugly, the old people are ugly, even little children and babies are ugly in Montreal. Well, it's that's an interesting a, that's city. That's selling point, then. Is it? Well, if you're ugly, then you can go there and get laid. 
with another ugly person, right. I'll pass on that. Well, Montreal, and I put Paris on there too because there's a lot of frogs. <laughs> I've always said the only thing wrong with France is the French people, and the only thing wrong with Montreal is the people. They're all gross. I mean, not not just regular ugly, like you know, kind of like nondescript, but I mean extraordinarily ugly. There's something like a defect, genetic defect. They're French. So that'll be the second pull for later on. Got that big black guy again, and I can't understand why it's so hard for me to find the story. Had to go to the Cincinnati Post to get the details on this. Now, CNN has shown it a hundred times already. Maybe not a hundred. About 30, man. About the big black guy that uh, got roughed up by the cops, and then, of course, he died. Huh. Three separate investigations have been launched into Cincinnati's first death in police custody since 2000 raising questions about the use of force that provides a troubling backdrop to Cincinnati's swearing-in ceremonies for their new city council today. Not uh, not good timing. They're investigating the early Sunday morning death of Nathaniel Jones, 41, no address available after a struggle with police outside a White Castle restaurant in Avondale, Ohio. Maybe that's Ever where they been to Cincinnati? Them. That's another place I don't want to go. No. I bet you the people there are even uglier than the people in Montreal. I'm sure. Paramedics who responded asked at 5.54 a.m. for police to be dispatched to the scene near the White Castle, saying the man was very much awake. He wasn't passed out, uh, unlike the reports, and becoming a nuisance to the people there. At 6 a.m., they asked for a mental health response team to attend to uh, take care of this disorderly subject run, and a minute later, somebody with a taser. But police say the brawl with Jones was already on, and although MHRT official Michael Schulte arrived just minutes later, it was already too late to avoid a physical confrontation. Per standard practice, six police officers involved in Jones' arrest have been placed on paid administrative leave as the investigation continues. They were forced to subdue him with batons and a chemical irritant because Jones, whom police estimated five foot six and nearly four hundred pounds, five foot six, nearly four hundred pounds, was slugging officers instead of obeying orders to put his hands behind his back to be handcuffed and arrested for disorderly conduct. He was pronounced dead shortly after being taken to the University Hospital in Cincinnati. It's shades of Rodney Jones all over again, although a little bit darker than Rodney or King. Did I say Rodney Jones? Well, don't yeah, make whatever. any difference because they're both dead. Interchangeable. Although Rodney King at least wasn't that fat, you know. Can you imagine no. five, six, and four hundred pounds? Well, we've seen him. We've seen the tape a hundred times on TV. Just a tub of uh, tub of trouble. <laughs> and then, of course, his brother plays for the Bengals, Bubba Trouble. Ten thirteen at five sixty. Imagine this. Imagine envisioning Todd Dreck under a gigantic Mack truck, bleeding to death. No, not that. Imagine zero closing costs. Imagine zero application fees, zero credit bureau fees, zero discounted points. I like the first one best. It's the last mortgage you'll ever need. It's the revolutionary only one mortgage from Financial Group. Now with an interest rate of just 1.95% too. That means if you have a $200,000 loan, for example, you pay just 738 bucks a month. Once you refinance or get a new home mortgage from Financial Group, you will never ever pay closing costs again. Call today and find out about it. Call 1-800-940-LEND. Grab yourself real financing power with a low-rate mortgage. You can move to your next property without any further cost or expense. The only one mortgage from Financial Group. For details, call 1-800-940-LEND. It's a whole new way to buy. There's zero underwriting fees, zero dock fees, zero prepayment penalty, and zero closing costs, even when you move to another property. Get yourself financing at just 1.95%. Never pay closing costs again either. Call Financial Group today, 1-800-940-LEND. They're an equal housing lender. Restrictions apply. Rate subject to change monthly, 5.19 APR. Sports Radio 560. QAM. It's Michael Jackson. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much. What happened? God knows in my heart how much I adore children. What went wrong here? I sleep in bed with all of them. Macaulay Culkin were little. Kiri, Kieran Culkin was people on this side. Macaulay Culkin's on this side. The sister's in there. We're all just doing all kind of crazy stuff. Boy, that's just not right. It's very right. Get real. You don't speak with uh, your kids or some other kids who need love? Am I missing something here? My children sleep with other people all the time. I don't believe that at all. I'm telling you the honest truth. You want a piece of me? <laughs> Let's take a short break and we'll come right back. 1017 at 560 WQM. Boy, I have a feeling it's going to be a long day today. It might be a long week because they're all recuperating. Yeah. I don't, is my phone working? Maybe your your phone's all lit up down there. Let's see. I don't hear a dial tone, do you? No. Let's try this one. Do you hear a dial tone? Yeah. 
You do? I hear a dial tone, don't you? No. See, that's probably a good reason why this uh, phone ain't working up here is because this thing needs to be reset or something like that. You hear a dial tone? Yeah. No, uh, that was Josh's bad Why You didn't hear it when I did. Wait a minute. One moment, please. Okay, let's see if those dots come back on. I know line one ain't working yet. Okay, let's punch one up right here. Do you hear anything? Oh, yeah. there it is. How come it sounds like that, though? You one hear that? Things. It's one of those things. What about line three? Okay, we'll see, because I don't think uh, the phone is working right, but that's okay. Five. Let's uh, take a test call. WQAM test call. I'm sorry? QAM. Is this a test call? This is Reverend Jones. Mm -hmm. This is Reverend freaking Jones. Yeah, that was him. How do you like that? Is this a test call? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I asked George how the show went on Friday. He said he had like uh, four cranks that kept the show going for four hours. Pretty much. On rotation. Well, let's see how this one sounds. QAM, test call. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't too bad. They're not. They're sounding kind of strange, though, aren't they? Well, <laughs> no, I'm not talking about content. I'm talking about technical quality. I'm, I'm not talking about content. I'm used to that. Are you kidding me? WQM test line. Hi, this is Julio. This is what? Julio. Julio de Grisius? Yes. Get lost, Julio. Oh, he's trying to do the uh, PP from Pembroke Pines. Oh. Okay, who do you think was the most exciting athlete ever to play for a South Florida team? I don't care about sports. Pavel Bure, Dan Marino, or Jay Fiedler. They're going to get this one wrong. There's got to be some other names. Uh, B suggested, of course, he had some hurry coon names on there, but I don't, I don't want to put them on myself. We'll leave that up to the audience, okay? Don't answer the phone, whatever you do, Josh, because I'm having so much fun already. Well, at least, at least, oh, well, we'll get to all these other bedtime stories, okay? Okay. I just, I just am nauseated and revolted by the way the media re reacts to everything. You know, they put together this, this ridiculous, this, uh, oh, we're gonna sh surprise the media and we're gonna pull a shock and the president's gonna show up there for like, uh, you know, a couple of hours. And then by the time they announce it to the world, he's already gonna be hightailing it back to, uh, to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it was heartfelt and it was a show of concern for the uh, troops. They don't belong there in the first place for crying out loud, but we're not supposed to say those things. Hey, don't forget it was brave that he didn't even leave the airport. Right, that's right. And how about that uh, British Airways pilot that actually saw Air Force One and said, did I really see that? No, no, you didn't see that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I thought I saw WQAM. Hello? Yes, sir. Your name? Yes. Y is this him? Yes, it is, sir. Yeah, Neil, isn't it ironic how oh, the black guy was killed in front of White Castle? Oh, but that guy again. Jesus Christ, get a life. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. What's going on? What about hey. Alonzo Morning? Alonzo Morning. With or without uh, the kidney. Okay, thank you, sir. It's a pretty weak choice, but we'll put him in there. Alonzo Morning. I don't think there are that many good choices. Right? I think yeah. Burry and Marino are the, uh, that'll be it. How about Bob Greasy? Was he exciting? No. Was he boring? Yes. Terminal? How about Brian Greasy? Is he boring? Yes. And incompetent. Oh, look at this. Now you got copy that you're faxing me here now that the show is in the middle. You know, fat boy, you're just an accident waiting to happen, you tub of crap. You make me want to puke. Remember the song Shout by Joey D and the Starlighters? You know, yeah. you make me want to. Yeah, that, we ought to have the same thing for a fat boy. You know, you make me want to puke. God, it's already 21 past 10. He's faxing me. Hey, of course, he probably had like a little eating orgy over the holidays. Yeah, that, what a shock that that uh, Schwarzer just called again, making the whole song and dance about it's a racial thing again. He was making a joke, I think, or trying. No, he to. was. No, he was not making a joke. That's the same guy that calls all the time. What do you mean he's making a joke? Well, I think this time he was trying to be funny with the White Castle uh, angle. No. WQAM uh, line nine. Joe Zagaki. Disaster line, yeah. Oh, Joe Zagaki. Joe Zagaki sucks, okay? WQAM, hello. WQAM, Joe Zagaki sucks, okay? Yeah, okay. Paul Warfield. Paul Warfield was great, number 42. See ya. I'm going to spell 42 all of the these names wrong. What? I'm going to spell Oh, how can names. you spell Warfield? War and field. How tough what? is that, okay? W -O -U -R. Jesus Christ. W-O-U-R. Morning is M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, yeah, as in the morning that. after. As in the morning after he uh, gets that kidney. Did he get his kidney yet? No. Come on, somebody out there, it's the holidays. Donate a kidney to Alonzo, for Christ's sakes. Will you get with it? Jesus. He did so much for all of us. Didn't he? Huh? <laughs> oh. 
Okay, I'm going to vote already here. I'm sticking my vote on there. Everybody knows what I'm voting for because I've got the right answer on this one. But, uh, yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, Dan Marino, 16. Oh, there. Oh, man. I'm not going to say anything. This poll is going to be even more cockeyed than the one you took on Friday. Cockeyed. WQAM. Jim Mandich. Jim Mandich is a, a choice. Yeah, right. Are well, we going to put him on there? No, don't put him on there. He's a tight end. Is a tight end exciting? No. No. They're really struggling. I beg to differ. A tight end can be very exciting. Right. Right. But not the end you got in mind, and we're not talking about lunch. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Roy Disney, by the way, Roy resigns from Disney aboard. He's the scapegoat for now, but he says he wants to take somebody with him. He not only resigned today, but he also says he wants to take Eisner with him because he said he's a disaster, a mitigated disaster. He said his leadership over the past seven years he wouldn't wish on Hitler or something like that. Disney, nephew of company co-founder Walt Disney, did not immediately return calls yesterday. We can't imagine why, but he did say that he wants Eisner to resign also. Disney and his closest board associate, Stanley Goldman, among Eisner's most vocal critics, as the company's stock price has declined and ratings have fallen its ABC TV network. Yada, yada, yada. Two other board members who will be uh, not, not be nominated to serve new terms, Raymond Watson, 76, and Thomas Murphy, 77. And we'll keep our eye on Eisner. According to reports, Eisner's going to hang on. Because otherwise, it would be the point of doing those Mickey and Eisner bits, right? Right. WQAM. QAM, hello. That was something, the way we started with the phone. I thought we were going to have a disaster day. QAM, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to respond to the poll. Go right ahead. Okay, how about Jeff Conine? Jeff Conine is exciting. Well, he's about the only thing we got and, uh, as far as baseball goes down here. Yeah, that's well, recognizable that's... with Florida. Maybe that's why nobody goes to the games during the regular season. Okay, thanks a lot, <laughs> Pally. Uh, Jeff Conine's exciting. I would have thought that Don Trell would have been exciting, right? Huh? Don Trell Willis. Hey, you better get with it, mister. Didn't I just tell you a minute ago, the older you get, the more important these ball games become? No. Oh, right. is it the other way around? No, it's true. As you become a little bit older. Don't let me forget to do a couple hours on Montreal and all the ugly. It's an interesting city. It's a, it's a really interesting, it's very European. And they got 80 million like, uh, you know, sex shops and, uh, dildos and stuff like that. But the problem is that uh, there's nobody there you'd want to have sex with in the first place, unless you're really into very, very ugly people, like me. I felt, I felt beautiful there. For the first yeah. time in my life, I felt, man, I'm a hot number. There were like old men running around chasing me up and down St. <laughs> Catherine Street, grabbing my ass. Like, get out of here. I was, I was fending them off with my umbrella. I'm serious, man. I've never, <laughs> ever seen a place where there's, and they have this underground network of, uh, stores and shops of like walkways under, underground, underground city. 18 miles of it. 30 kilometers. And it's really neat. Of course, the only problem was it took like a couple of days to figure that thing out, while in the meantime the snow is blowing and wind and just unbelievably nasty. Oh. So there was a lot of blowing going on, but not the kind that I had in mind. It was just a, a horrible place. It, it's nice to see. You might want to go see it sometime, sure. maybe for like a couple of hours. And you look around and you say, God damn, Neil was right. I mean, I'm not saying to go someplace, everybody's got to be beautiful. We can't all look lovely like, uh, you know... Like Mo, for example. Absolutely. By the way, Mo, I'm glad you're getting your beauty sleep this morning after having that tough performance last night. Made a bad mistake. We have that on. Uh, we don't want to play it. But he just keeps making more and more mistakes, the Mo Meisters. You get into your 80s and your bag starts like overflowing in the middle of the game. It's, it's hard to concentrate, you know? He's got, he's more worried about constipation than concentration. That's the Mo man for you. And the worst part of it is we carried that game right here on QM last night. Jacksonville and Tampa. Yeah. With the Mo Man. So we had to have another morning beauty rest off today because he had a ball game for Jones Network last night. Nice going, Mo, you tub of crap. 1027 at 560 WQM. It's that time of year again. Everybody's going to be stopping by your house for the holidays if they haven't already. But it's still not too late to call Dry Concepts and rid your carpets of all the germs and schmutz that's sitting deep inside. Take care of your carpet. Clean it fast and clean it right by calling Dry Concepts today, as in right now. Because Dry Concepts is hands down your pants, the leader when it comes to protecting and keeping your carpet colors vibrant, sparkling clean, leaving your carpet soft to the touch and just looking like brand new. For over 20 years, I've trusted nobody else with my carpets except these folks because they're the best. They've been the number one carpet cleaning company for a Coons age in town. Nobody else dry cleans your carpets because it's an exclusive patented method. When your carpet, when they're done, your carpets look just like brand new and they'll be ready for all the holiday traffic in just a couple of hours. 
So call today, ask them to put you on their standby list, and you can save 15% extra off the already reasonable price of the job. And don't forget, they always give you a written guaranteed price up front before they start the job. You have enough other things to worry about during the holidays, so leave your carpet to dry concepts. Call them today, and believe you me, they'll perform a miracle right on your floor. Call 1-800-248-5071. That's 1-800-248-5071, or read about them on the web. Get all the info you'll be looking for at dryconcepts.com. There is a girl in extra wide jeans, a girl whose head weighs a ton, and she's living with the women and the funny play toys in the house of the lesbians. When she was young at a restaurant with a boy, he didn't know that she was gay until he noticed each time they went out, she went for the seafood buffet. You're gay. Just look at all Rosie's Dyke sisters now. Just look what they have done. The minute she comes home from work through that door, well, off her panties come. She laid it down to stop publishing the rosy mag. Left a laid off staff, not paid. And Rosie's girlfriend, who's pregnant, Right now, I guess she just only got laid. There is a girl with extra wide jeans. Entertainer she's become. And she goes by the name of Rosie O.D. in the house of the lead. So you see, we've got some bum information here. You give it to me, I pass it along to the audience, and everybody's wondering, Woo, like that, like I'm some kind of a moron. Some well, kind we of can a blame high boy for that one too. Blame who? Fat boy, yeah. Right. Tub of crap, you idiot, you moron. Mo Howard David did not do the game last night, Jacksonville and Tampa on the radio. He did the Viking Rams game at one o'clock. Now, where the hell? I guess it doesn't really make much difference where the game was, whether it was in Minnesota or in uh, St. Louis. That was a 1 o'clock game, which means the game was over by 4, 4.15 at the latest, and he couldn't get back to do the show this morning? No. Is what they're telling us? Right. Because that's part of his deal now when he does these extracurricular activities. He has to have some time off to refill his bag is what I'm hearing. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Right. So that's probably a service to the South Florida audience, the fact that he... But you're, I'm getting all this bad information about he did the game last night, which I would understand that. Even you could understand that. Sure. He needs his beauty rest, although it hasn't kicked in yet. In fact, I think he'd be perfect in Montreal. Maybe he and I will elope. Here's a fact that says the most exciting Florida athlete was Larry Zonka. When he got the ball, it was an amazing display of running as he sacrificed his body for the team, unlike anyone ever to wear a Dolphin uniform. He literally carried the 72 Dolphins to the perfect season by getting impossible third and long and uh, first downs, uh, punishing opposing defenses to the point where they were reluctant to even try to tackle him by the fourth quarter. He paid for this with a very short career and now is almost crippled as a result of his sacrifice. Doesn't that make you want to, like, have a tear well up in the corner of your eye? Already has. It says, for all the Marino sniffers out there, it's very appropriate that Dan has a statue, even though he never brought home a championship. At the end of Marino's career, he looked like a statue standing in the pocket. If Dan gets a statue, Zonka should get a shrine. But don't confuse the idiot Miami fans with the truth. Uh, personally, I thought Larry Zonka was uh, boring watching him. I mean, you know, he ran like an old lady with her legs tied together. He was uh, very difficult to bring down. He got a lot of yardage, jotty yard, all these things. But, you see, they don't understand the question again. They don't get it. They don't get it. And, and maybe he does get it, but I just disagree wholeheartedly. The idea of watching Larry Zonka run like an old lady was just 
It, it just, I don't know. If, if somebody was to say Jim Brown in Cleveland, anybody could agree with that. Even George would agree with that, especially when he was beating up his wife. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. Right. That's what she said. Who do you think was the most exciting athlete ever to play for a South Florida team? This is not a difficult question in terms of understanding what it means. You can have a different opinion. So are we putting Larry Zonker on there? Oh, sure. You got it spelled right there. I'm sure. I don't care about sport. Well, let me read the result. Dan Marino, 49. I don't care about sports, 14. Pavel Bury, which clearly is the correct answer by a mile, has got only eight votes. Eight votes. Now he's got ten. Let's see. Marino, 51. I don't care about sports, 17. Bury, 10. Paul Warfield, 4. Jay Fiedler's got three. Oh, which, I mean, is just enough to make me want to scream. Ah! Like that. The much maligned and abused and despised and reviled and hated Jay Fiedler up until Thanksgiving Day. He's got three. Or actually up until that, uh, when he came in the fourth quarter of the uh, previous game, the Redskin game. Uh, Alonzo Mourning's got a pair. Only one don't work. And Larry Zonka just went on there out of 87 votes. Jay Fiedler's got three votes. Oi! And I guess we don't have no Hurricane fans out there because we don't have no Hurricane players being called in yet. The B suggested on uh, Thursday Michael Irvin for this list. Are we going to put him on there? No. I mean, that's just ridiculous. That's silly. That, that's, that's just downright silly. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T. I will say one great thing for Montreal, beside the fact that it's very European. Yeah. And it's uh, got a lot of... Uh, I'm telling you, the shopping areas, the underground area is very, very upscale. Beautiful. Amazing. Not a lot of roller skate or but anything. But, boy, do they have a lot of great restaurants. Man, oh, man, all we did was eat and eat manja, manja, manja for uh, three days. Are you allowed to skate? Were there any skaters in the I'm thin ice. I see. And guess what? You're not going to believe this. Let, let me give you a little clue. Guess who was in Montreal the same time that I was, and I didn't even realize it. Speaking of going to dinner, who I could have bought dinners. Guess where the Panthers played Saturday night? Oh, no. Really? Guess where the Florida Panthers came. Victor Kozlov uh, scored late. Come on, come on, come on, come on. a very dubious penalty call against Montreal, but nevertheless, Panthers tied it up, pulled out a 1-1 tie. If it's free, it's me. There you go. The rim man, the Panthers were there. I didn't even realize it. I could have taken Rimmer to dinner, for example, at um, Boca Chino's. Tremendous restaurant. Or at Rubens for, for some real good deli. Not that Erzatz make believe place you took me here in Toronto uh, months ago, Rimmer. A really good place called Rubens. Sounds Jewish to me. And then there, there's a chain of restaurants called uh, Baton Rouge. Do we have that in South Florida? Do we have Baton Rouge? Don't know. Never oh, man. It. Good steaks and great. Just a really fabulous place. It was fabulous. But I forgot all about it until it was probably too late. Sorry, Rimmer. I'd have called you for sure. I'd have tracked you down, wouldn't I? For a free meal? No. <laughs> five six seven oh five sixty. And speaking of free meals, tomorrow I got a banner day in my life. I'm. I don't know. I, I don't know how. How I should view this whole thing. With your tomorrow eyes. evening, I'm taking to Ruth Chris, my favorite steakhouse in the world. I'm taking to Ruth Chris, a couple of my high school uh, friends I haven't right. seen in over forty years. Yeah. Now you're you're predicting I'm going to be depressed. No, I was just uh, pulling your leg. No, you were not. It'll be a fine nostalgia. No, but I've, they've already sent me, they've already emailed their pictures. They know what I look like. I mean, we realize they were old farts now. I haven't seen these, uh, you know, good people. Mm -hmm. Good good kids. Of course, they're not kids no more. You'll have a great time. <laughs> yeah, we will, How as a matter of fact. In spite of your sarcasm, things. okay, we'll have a good time. But we'll sit there looking at each other and think, oh, my God, are we old, you know? 61. 61 ain't old when you're in South Florida, but when you're here, it's like pretty old. Now, now I understand why all them French Canadians that come down to South Florida, everybody's always bitching about them with the Speedos, how fat and disgusting they are. It's because, first of all, they're disgusting when they're born, so they can't help that part. And the fat part, because they got all that good food there. What else are they going to do? They're just going to go underground, and they're going to go from one food court <laughs> to another one. to. A... I'm telling you, man, there's endless food. They even have, like, Laura Secord ice cream there. You ever have that? No. Mmm. I did. Well, I wanted to, but I, I did. 1041, 19, <laughs> before 11. Oh, speaking of great food, what a nice segue, Neil. One of the best kept secrets in South Florida as far as good meals are concerned is right in prestigious Coral Springs. It's called the Gold Coast Seafood Grill where they just celebrated their one year anniversary. They got three and a half big fat juicy stars from the Sun Sentinel Showtime Dining Review and well worth it, believe you me, well earned. The Gold Coast Seafood Grill's got unbelievably mouth-watering specialties like mango plum salmon, almond crusted mahi-mahi, orange honey glazed sea bass, and crab and shrimp stuffed trout. 
There's a bar atmosphere at the Joy with an extensive line of martini list. Big martinis during happy hour, only five and a half bucks, four to seven p.m. seven days a week. The Gold Coast Seafood Grill. You'll find it in Coral Springs at 2752 North University Drive inside the beautiful Walk Shopping Center. Nine five four two five five Fish is the number to call for reservations. More information. You can dine inside or outside. Large parties and private functions welcome too. If you got a bunch of pain in the ass visitors during the holidays, this would be a great place to take them for a really enjoyable lunch or dinner. The Gold Coast Seafood Grill in Coral Springs, twenty seven fifty two North University Drive inside the Walk Shopping Center. Always find great seafood at great prices at the Gold Coast Seafood Grill in prestigious Coral Springs. Live, live and local. Sports Radio 560 QAM. Yes. Burning down the Christmas tree at the Christmas party bash. Yelling and screaming and hollering, everybody's pretty trash. Burning down the Christmas tree, then relieving ourselves outside. Later we'll pull a fire alarm, then run like hell and hide. Help yourselves, got two full kegs of beer left in the rear. Only out to get my jollies, deck my balls with boughs of holly. Burning down the Christmas tree just for giggles and for sh**. <laughs> Carols crank down the stereo, all the neighbors are having fits. Burning down the Christmas tree, it's a beer-filled holiday. Damn sure you will have a blast when you do Christmas our way. Oh! 10.46 at 560 WQM. Are we getting back to normal yet? No. I don't think so. I think this is just the beginning of the insanity. Right. In fact, Muff said to me, he said, well, you got another three weeks, and then you go on a nice long vacation, and everybody gets their Christmas break, and then we go through the New Year's thing. and everybody... See, what it's all degenerated into... And people are going to say, oh, no, you're wrong, Neil. It's all the friends and family getting together, all this. Well, that's a part of it, including family members that you hate like poison. But it's an excuse to do two things, basically. Yeah. Eat a lot of food and mm-hmm. get drunk. <laughs> right? What's your point? And then there are other things that go along with it, like sit around on your fat ass watching football and things like that. Oh, yeah. But eat a lot of food and get drunk. <laughs> right? Right. Get absolutely. Uh... Now, here's this uh, thing you just faxed me from the uh, London Daily Times. Yes. From the Daily Times monitor, excuse me. One more page to it. To it. Well, then, no, this is enough. According to a stunning report posted by a retired Navy lieutenant commander and 28-year veteran of the Defense Department, the Bush administration's assurance about fighting weapons of mass destruction in Iraq was based on a CIA plan to plant WMDs inside the country, which we suspected all along. Nelda Rogers, no relation, <laughs> The Pentagon whistleblower claims the plan failed when the secret mission was mistakenly taken out by friendly fire, the Environmentalist Against War report. Nelda Rogers is a 20-year veteran debriefer for the DOD. She's become so concerned for her safety, she decided to tell the story about this latest CIA military fiasco in Iraq. According to Al Martin, raw.com, Ms. Rogers is number two in the chain of command within this DOD special intelligence uh, office. It's a 10-person debriefing unit within the central debriefing office for the DOD. The information that is being leaked out is information obtained while she was in Germany, heading up the debriefing of a yada yada yada. It goes on and on and on and on uh, forever. According to AlMartinRaw.com, the Agriculture Department has often been used as a paymaster on behalf of that. This is just too convoluted, okay? Another aspect of Ms. Rogers' report concerns a covert operation which was to locate the assets of Saddam Hussein and his family, including cash, gold bullion, jewelry, and assorted valuable antiquities. The problem became evident when the operation in Iraq involved 100 people, all of whom apparently are now dead, having succumbed to so-called friendly fire. <laughs> oh, yeah. The scope of this operation included the penetration of the Central Bank of Iraq, other large commercial banks in Baghdad, the Iraqi National Museum, and certain presidential palaces where monies and bullion were secreted. They identified about $2 billion in cash, another $150 million in euros, in physical banknotes, another $100 million in sundry foreign currencies ranging from yen to British pounds. 
These people died, mostly in the same place in Baghdad, supposedly from a stray cruise missile or a combination of missiles and bombs that went astray. There were supposedly 76 who died. There are another 24 through a variety of friendly fire mistaken identity, and some of them, their whereabouts are simply unknown. <laughs> right. Oh, man, talk about the Keystone Cops. But we don't want to talk about depressing stuff like that, about illegal wars in Iraq and things like that, because everybody's supposed to feel cozy and goosey and warm now, right, right? and lovey-dovey for the holidays. At least those are the uh, soldiers that are still alive. 5670560. Oh, oh, there's Laura Bush. Boy, she just also makes me sick to my mm -hmm. stomach. Talk about a goody two-shoes. I'd rather have some slut in there or some dyke like Hillary, you know? Somebody with, like, a little personality. She's as bland as vanilla pudding. Look at the poll. Who do you think is the most exciting athlete to ever play for a South Florida team? Dan Marino out of 140. Danny Boy's got 78. <laughs> 78 votes for Danny Boy. I'm not knocking Danny Boy, but that's just, uh, I don't care about sports. 26. Pavel Bury, 18. Jay Fiedler's got 7. Paul Warfield, 7. Alonzo Morning, 2. And Larry Zonka, 2. We need some more names for this list. Okay. I guess there just haven't been that many exciting athletes that have played in South Florida history, you know? Huh? I just guess. See, this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt the idea that South Florida's got a hockey team is so ludicrous, so ridiculous, so asinine. It's insane. It's madness. If I'm Gary Bettman, and thank the Lord that I'm not. Oh, that Josh Beckett. There you go. That, how soon they forget. Josh Beckett. That's right. Good old country boy there in the World Series for the Marlins. Josh Beckett. Get his name on there. Got it? Got it. Well, that goes to show you how fast they forget. Because they really don't give a crap in the first place. I mean, Jeff Conine, you know, a damn good ball player and good in the clutch, but the idea that he's exciting, no. I don't think so. I mean, just to look at him, he's boring, you know? But that's the way it goes. We need some more names on this list. It's not a very uh, impressive long list. But anyway, getting back to the thing about if I'm Gary Bettman, there is a whole... Because there's not going to be no season next year anyway. And when they eventually do come back, if they do the NHL, there's a whole bunch of teams got to go bye-bye. Carolina's one of them. Bye-bye, Carolina. See ya. Florida Panthers, there's another one. Pittsburgh Penguins, I hate to say it. Bye-bye. Buffalo Sabres, there's four. Can't draw flies. All of this expansion, didn't I talk about that years ago during my moment of weakness discussing sports? The fact that all of this expansion was going to lead to all this crap watering down and nobody's going to care and it's all going to like blow up in everybody's face. Didn't I talk about that? Yes. Just like I talked about that deregulation of radio, didn't I? Yes. Years ago. And how it's going to take away the choices from the public. What a bunch of bastards, man. What a bunch of lunatics. And they're doing it blatantly in front of the dumb public. And the reason they can do it is because they get away with it. Just like that Medicare bill. Mm -hmm. And now everybody's saying, oh, gee, we're going to all get screwed. All the senior citizens are getting screwed. Well, bend over. It's time for your enema. It's going to be a blueberry enema, though. How much? And is it covered? About 30, man. Oh, the answer to the second part. No, no it's not covered. you got to pay for it. I mean, why would you want to save 80% on your prescription drugs that you can get from Canada, which are exactly the same drugs as the ones that get in the U.S.? I mean, to make up a story like, well, we can't guarantee the quality of the uh, the, the safety and the quality, give me a frickin' break. You ought to read the articles about that here, about don't you just see people dropping on street corners everywhere here from those dangerous prescription drugs in Canada, eh? Oh, God. Well, that's what that SARS thing was all about, you right? You see, this Bad is drugs. the problem, the dumb Dumb, dumb American public. The overwhelming majority will buy any kind of crap they peddle to them, just like the stories about Al-Qaeda and Sodom and about the weapons of mass destruction, which now turn to find out that the Keystone Cops couldn't even plant their own weapons of mass destruction, and the people who knew about uh, this whole deal, they're all dead. They all just died from friendly fire. Maybe a couple from unfriendly fire, but whatever. Somebody made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Wow. I mean, we're sitting here watching this all unfold right in front of our puss, and it's like uh, Gornish Tolfin. There's nothing you can do about it because it's, it's like it's not even going on. And even the so-called experts on Eat the Press and all these other shows, it, uh, they talk caca. They talk uh, nonsense. Instead of somebody getting up there, I'd like to see just once old David Broder get up there and meet the president. You son of a bitch, what's wrong with you? You lying bastard, you're lying to the public. You know, get up there and get emotional about it. They can't do it. Uh -uh. They just sit there like that, and they mumble. Plus, nobody under the age of 100 is watching them shows anyway. Although, the rumor I'm hearing is if you're good on Meet the Press. That's right. <laughs> then they will fear you. Yeah, then they will really fear you. Oh, God. Don't get excited about it now. Just calm down, relax. Nobody cares. It's a season for uh, good cheer and gifts. Season for commerce. Everybody go out and spend like they're like drunken sailors. 
five, six, seven. Let's get some more impressive names for this list, man. There's got to be some really great uh, South Florida athletes over the years. We're saying of all time. And look at this paltry, putrid, little puny list. WQAM. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, I got an exciting one for you. Anna Kornikova. Well, excite some of us anyway. She played for a South Florida team? Well, she's an exciting South Florida athlete. Yeah, okay. I tried telling you this was a bad idea. What do you mean by that? I'm just kidding. What do you mean it's a bad idea? I think it's I think it's an interesting point. It's a good question. And the fact that they've got it so wrong goes to show you. I mean, the fact that Jay Fiedler's got a bunch of... If Jay Fiedler, who's got seven votes, if he's the most exciting athlete that ever played for a South Florida sports team, then we might as well just uh, fold them all up. Okay. Uh, fine with me. Who the hell cares? But, I mean, Jesus, what are we talking about? Jay Fiedler is the most exciting uh, player that ever played for a South Florida team. That up until uh, Thursday and the week before, they wanted to, like, run his ass out of town on a goddamn stick of halava. God, are you people fake. Erzatz. Erzatz. That's the name for South Florida. Erzatz. They, instead of changing Dade County to Miami-Dade, they should have just changed the Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach, the whole, uh, the whole trifecta there. Erzatz land. Make-believe land. Michael's got Neverland. We got Erzatz land. WQAM. Hello. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good. Listen, uh, how about Larry Zonker? I think it was. I he's don't know on there, Pally. He's on there. We just got through doing about ten minutes about Larry Zonker running like an old lady with her legs tied together. And Larry Zonker's got five votes. He must be uh, joining us in midstream. Well, a lot of people out there trying to put their lives back together after the holiday, right? Right. Shame on them. 162 votes. Who do you think was the most exciting athlete to play for a South Florida team? Did Anna Kornikova play for a team? No. She might have played for the entire team, but not the way we're talking, okay? We're not talking about sex play. According to you, Plus, she I think she's still a beard. I still say she's a beard. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, she's that going whatever. with Enrique. She Enrique the Greasiest? <laughs> I mean, even you got to laugh at that one, oh, huh? Yeah. Next thing, she'll be dating Ricky Martin. That, I think, will, uh, <laughs> huh? That will be the last blow for that image right there. When she starts dating Ricky Tricky Martin, that screaming queen. And then maybe she can go out and date Miss Fudge. Miss Fudge was all whipped up about the Democrats are having a meeting this weekend, a bunch of influential Hollywood people about uh, how to stop Bush, how to trash Bush. Good. And George Soros is pouring billions of dollars in there because he realizes that the only hope we got is to get rid of Bush. But in the meanwhile, the public is asleep. They're like in la-la land. They're worried about important things like Jay Fiedler in his ears. Ever see him together with Ross Perot at the same time? No. Oh, and guess what they showed? Oh, my God. The weather was so bad Saturday, I got snowed in. The only places I was going was underground in Montreal. So Saturday night, I'm sitting channel surfing in between a hockey game. Or was it? Yeah, it was Saturday, I believe. And they re-showed Larry King's supposed surprise 70th birthday party. Mm -hmm. The worst fake surprise I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I'm just shocked. I can't believe this. Like, like, and he was saying it like like it was a joke, like uh, we weren't mm -hmm. going to believe he was shocked. He knew about it all along. So it goes to show you, boys and girls, that it pays to kiss a lot of ass, man. Hey, there was a suck fest, the likes of which you've never seen. They probably had like so his Rectum. back together again after that show. So much suction. God. Did he ever pay them people back? No. no. That was a different lifetime. Oh, how handy. Yeah. Handy excuse, Larry. You bastard, you. 1057 at 560 WQM. Hey, it's a wonderful time of the year unless you hate crowded malls, long register lines, and parking hassles. So make your gift giving a little easier this year for you and your loved ones. A gift certificate from Dial a Mattress. Call them now, 1-800-MATTRESS, and give the gift they'll be thanking you for a year in and year out for a long time. Dial a Mattress has got gift certificates in any denomination. And a new bed from the master bedroom makes a perfect gift you'll enjoy for years. At Dollar Mattress, no phony promises, no bait and swish, just discount prices every day on top brand names you know and love, now including Stearns and Foster Hewitt. And Dollar Mattress has got the guaranteed lowest prices on Stearns and Foster anywheres. When you call Dollar Mattress, 1-800-MATTRESS, you pick the day and time for delivery. You know how it works. Any two-hour window, seven days a week from 8 and a.m. till 10 p.m., and your back will thank you for doing it. Believe you me, you'll love it. Honest sales practices, fantastic everyday low prices, same-day delivery, free setup and removal. So all of these things, it's easy to see why Dollar Mattress is unbeatable in customer satisfaction. So for service like you only dream about, do what I always do and everybody else at QM. Call the betting experts, dial a mattress at 1-800-MATTRESS, 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S, or online, it's mattress.com. 
Happy holidays from all your friends at Dynamatrix. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAQAM. Guests, everybody that they ever knew, everybody that they ever bumped to on a street corner, they're all a bunch of liars and trash, you know what? Right. Alex, who generally sends us some pretty far fetched facts, has got a couple of good choices today. The Beezer, John Van Beesbrook. That'll piss Rimmer off because he hates him like poison. John Van Beesbrook. The Beezer. Even George knows who that is. And I know how to spell his name because I spoke to him on the phone. That should do it. Although he's got it spelled wrong here, so don't get sucked in by that. And Tim Hardaway. Remember Tim Hardaway with the heat? Hardaway left wing. Left sideline. Marley. Three point. Oh! Oh! He hit it. Oh! He hit it. Oh! He hit it. I don't mean that was a three. I mean that was from the moon. From the moon, from his restaurant, about three blocks from here. Dave Halberstam, good friend of ours and a good guy that got screwed over real bad, so it's a good thing Pat Riley had to quit because he's an asshole. Hey, Pat, you're an asshole. Can't stand you, Pat, with your slick down here. Never trust anybody with slick down here. Ronald Reagan had slick down here. Do we trust him? No. Name me somebody else that's got bad slick down here like that, like Pat Riley. Jimmy Johnson, trust oh, him? No. No. See what I'm saying? Right. Good point. Jimmy Johnson, who stuck Shula in the back, stabbed him, stuck it in there, twisted it, twisted it, came to Miami for four years and disgraced himself, did nothing, and then goes back on TV and sits there and giggles and pukes, you know, with all those other giggling idiots. A packed flight, speaking of idiots, from Atlanta's Hartsfield Airport to San Francisco was delayed for four hours yesterday over a sticker affixed to the cabin door. You know that story about the WMDs? I think that's a bogus. Okay. Don't you? Uh, I think I'd have heard more about it. Yeah, look at look at the date on the bottom of it. If the date is uh, twelve eight, which is uh, August uh, twelfth. Yeah. Uh, See what I'm saying? Like, like a little. But anyway, the AirTran Airbus uh, 320 was being prepared to take off, and an employee saw a sticker reading "Terrorism equals war" on the cabin door's exterior. CNN says the captain took the plane back to the gate, of, and the 156 passengers were ordered to dis disembark and have their luggage rescreened by security. Airline spokesman Tad Hutchinson said, about three hours later, three hours later, the passengers, including a man who admitted slapping the stick around the door, were allowed back on a plane, including him. Mm. The mm. flight departed more than four hours behind schedule, Hutchinson said. It was a practical joke taken a little too far, Hutchinson said. No charges were filed against the passenger. At the very least, they should let all the other passengers beat him on the head with a goddamn baseball bat. <laughs> Don't you think? Right, like that scene from Airplane, that line. I mean, well, what, what is that? He admitted slapping the stick around the door as a joke. Terrorism equals war. What an effing asshole, man. As if there isn't enough problem already. Uh, I just, that, that's, he, to think that they let him continue. Mm -mm. And then when he asked for a lighter for his shoes, I think that should have <laughs> given him a little clue. <laughs> now, let's see. There's a picture that you just faxed me. I have no idea what I... this is. It says that Don votes for Charlie Huff. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Charlie Huff with his four mile an hour knuckleball. Okay, don't put that on there. It's a little bit of a joke, I hope. I see. Charlie Huff. I remember that over oh, that first Marlins game, man. I was there. And there was old Charlie Huff, 150 years old. And because the plate umpire felt sorry for him, if he rolled the ball up to the plate, they still called it a strike. You had to be there. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, South Florida, see, that's why this radio station, I still say, is one of the modern, um, it's one of the all-time miracles, a sports station in an area like South Florida, which doesn't know sports from their ass. It's because we have a bunch of overgrown children running around there, led by your friend Greg, and so therefore we made a whole station out of sports crap. Nonsense out of minutia. 206 votes, the most exciting athlete ever to play for South Florida sports team. I've, and we never did this pool, and I'm glad we didn't. Dan Marino, 109. I don't care about sports, 35. 17% of immovable, intractable people that just refuse to care. Pavel Bure's got 24, which should be hands down clearly the winner of this. But uh, then again, like I said, a town that knows wouldn't know a hockey puck if they stuck one up everybody's ass. Larry Zonka, 12. Paul Warfield, 12. Jay Fiedler's still stuck there on seven. That's got to be a joke, huh? Yeah, sure, whatever. Jay Fiedler's got seven votes. Alonzo Mornings, four. Josh Beckett, three. And none yet. They just both went up there. The Beezer, the Geezer, John Van Beesbrook, and Tim Hardaway. How come Jeff Conine's not on there? I don't know. Why not? Well, I don't know. Didn't you fax that to our good close friend? Maybe I forgot. Come on, Eric, let's get Jeff Conine on there. Good man. Uh, second go around, okay? And he's got that championship ring. He's got something Danny Boy ain't never gonna have. He's got that championship ring on his finger. Isn't that what makes you a real man, George? When you have a championship ring on your finger? Or somewhere else. Or maybe deep inside your, Welcome. on somebody else's finger. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Look who's there. NATO. Uh, there have been some reports. Someone showed me something off the Internet. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it was? I'll give you a clue. Anthrax. That's what it was. God, Rumsfeld, man. Hermann Gehring would be so embarrassed. WQAM. QAM. WQAM, hello. Can you please stop raping my Uncle Mo? His butt hurts. <laughs> Absolutely. That was excellent. And that was a real call, by the way. <laughs> 567 oh, 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless Line. WQM, hello. Hey. Yes, sir. Deal. Yes. Hey, hey, Mercury Morris, man. Don't Mercury Morris off the Mercury way. Morris, man, there was a guy. Remember that show he had on QM for about five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Good old yeah, number about, 22. Yeah, about five minutes, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Pally. All right. Bye. And have, a, have a great holiday and quit being so damn happy. <laughs> and there's a guy that's happy in South Florida. That's shocking to us. That could be a first. Is that the first happy person we ever spoke to? <laughs> Today, anyway. <laughs> uh, today? This year, I think, and the year's almost over. <laughs> Good old Merck turned out to be kind of a jerk. He had a show on QM, like every other ex-jock, like the crow. Everybody who ever put on a jock strap has had at least a couple of moments in the sunshine on QAM. Manny Ramirez. <laughs> he was the best, and man, he was a, uh, did he ever smell or what? Yes. What is that thing with people that uh, bathe in talcum powder? I've never been able to understand what that's all about. It's like dry cleaning. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, I guess maybe that's why some guys put powder on their penis. They do? WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, you think about the hair with Pat Riley's hair? Yes. You ever, you ever see uh, the Mike Fratello's new hairdo? Who the hell's that? The guy does uh, he does the heat broadcast with uh, the other guy. Never seen him. He used to be a coach for the, uh, the Hawks, Fratello. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen this dude. It looks like Moe's piece. You used to have the slick back hair like uh, right. Oh, by the way, most piece ran away. That's why he couldn't be in today. His piece left home. The muskrat left home. Mike Fratello, you know who that is, don't you? No. Never heard of him. Uh-huh. I don't know who the hell that is, and I couldn't care less. I, I was that. talking about people with slick down here. Uh, another one is Dennis Kucinich. I like, I like Dennis, but the problem is he's got a, a hair job. <laughs> a bad one. He, he's got a, every day for Dennis is a bad hair day, like life in general. He'd be good in Montreal. In fact, he'd be a fashion plate there. I'm serious. It's just the most. I I I realize that you don't go anywhere like you go to Sweden. The people are beautiful. You go to Copenhagen. You go to uh, 
Amsterdam, you go to uh, Germany, you've said always. Germany, uh, oh, and... you go to Italy, it goes without saying, although there are a lot of different kind of Italian noses, but nevertheless, yeah, you'll yeah. see some strikingly beautiful men and women in Italy. But in Montreal, I, it must be a prerequisite, because uh, when I got off the plane, they said, oh, yeah, you'll fit here. Maybe you I wonder what I said, what do you mean glove. by that? Fat and ugly. They said, you fit in like a rubber glove. It's just, you, you think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. You, you reach the point, you're sitting there in a uh, fancy restaurant eating an expensive meal, and you start looking around, hoping a, a waiter, a waitress, a, a customer, somebody might look like human. No, see, I, I don't think you're exaggerating, because I know you, so I know if there had been one good-looking person, you would I'd have found seen him. him. Right. I'd have seen him. Or, I, and I will admit, there was one restaurant, Boca Chino, it was a very good restaurant, and there was two, the, the waitress and the, um, what are they, the hostess. Two blondes, I would say like 25, 30 ish, really hot looking. Nice. Uh, they only, and, and they must have been like uh, visiting or something. They were working like part time because there's no way that they were Montrealers. No chance. They definitely were not French. Not with that beautiful blonde hair. But other than that, I mean, uh, you just kept looking around and they were like, what, what is this? Where are, they gotta be hiding that spaceship underground, just like, uh, <laughs> Tom Welling is doing. They got, gotta be. So if you do, don't go to Montreal <clears throat> unless you just want to eat. If you want to eat, Perfect. And in the portions they give you, uh, maybe that's why all those frogs that come down are so goddamn fat. They give you these gigantic portions. That's very un-French. That is correct. I had uh, some veal scallopini, uh, some, some, uh, it was great. And, and it was like a little fettuccine supposed to come with it. The fettuccine enough was, uh, was enough to uh, feed four people. Wow. And I'm serious, at Boca Chino, so if you're ever real hungry. And they bring it to you on a plate that's like double the size of a regular plate, you know? Mm, there you go, so you can be sloppy. Like the trough. Right. we got a lot of people at QM that are like eating there at the trough. 11.13 at 5.60 QM. Hey, all you horse racing fans, Pompano Park is doing it. Pompano Harness Track and Card Room open for the 40th anniversary season. The track features free admission, free general parking every day, live harness racing in the poker room every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday like tonight. Poker starts at noon. And live racing gets underway at 7.05 in the p.m. And don't forget, every Monday night, there's a two-for-25-dollar dinner special at the Top of the Park restaurant. Every Wednesday night through December 17, the Hooters girls will be at Pompano Park for a dollar night, helping serve draft beers and meeting racing fans and showing you their stuff. And tonight, December 1st, is a very special night. My personal favorite of the season, it's free spaghetti dinner night at Pompano Park. That's right. Everybody who buys a Pompano Park program tonight at the track will get a free coupon, good for a free spaghetti dinner at the 4th Floor Players Lounge. They give you a little bit of a coupon. You go in there and manja manja. And coming up this Saturday, <clears throat> December 6th, come see the Broward County Mummers strut their stuff from 7 to 8.30. What, what are the Mummers? I'll draw you a picture. I, I have no idea what, what are they? I don't know what a mummer is. Pompano Park opens seven days and nights a week for simulcasting, featuring the best in harness, thoroughbred, highlight action from all across North America for you to watch and plunge your guts on. Don't forget, tonight's free spaghetti dinner night at Pompano Park for everybody who buys a uh, program, a Pompano Park program tonight at the track. Pompano Park, for the new race schedule, go online, pompanopark.com, or call 954-972-2000. Live and local, this is Sports Radio 560, QAQAM. Assholes, and you can tell him I said so. Was that Johnny Darkey was talking about? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, this holiday season, don't visit the same old relatives with the same old stories, bringing the same old dried flower centerpiece. Make this year one to remember. And really give thanks with the Anna Cornucopia. It's a holiday treat that eats like a meal. Inside the Anna Cornucopia, you'll find everything you need to make this year's Thanksgiving Day celebration complete. Just pop it in the oven. It's that easy. You don't need to set the timer. Okay, it's time to eat me. The Anna Cornucopia serves up hot and juicy with meaty breasts and thighs. No need to worry about leftovers. There's never any sloppy seconds when you're eating the Anna Cornucopia. It's finger licking good. And for dessert? Hey, nice melons. Let's put some cream on them. Make this holiday one to truly give thanks for. With the Anna Cornucopia, the most delicious spread you'll ever taste. Spread this. It's 1118. It's a beard. One of the most exciting, uh, but not the best, but exciting, Chucky Garce is a center fielder, Chucky Carr. Remember him? What? Put him on there. Well, we got to add some more names on this list because obviously, maybe that's why South Florida's had suffered from so many years of boredom. Too many boring guys. Too many boring athletes. 
Isn't that what makes a place exciting? No. Is exciting athletes? Who do you think was the most exciting athlete ever to play for a South Florida sports team? Danny Boy. We want you back, Danny Boy. 125 votes for Danny Boy. 50%. 200 and, uh, you believe that? Hmm. 250 votes, he's got exactly half. 125. Sure, he's an icon. He's a what? An icon. I don't care about sports. 45, 18% of you, George. <coughs> Militant. You refuse to care enough to send your very best or even worst. We just refuse to give a crap about these very highly important stuff on QAM. Mm, no, yeah. Pavel Bure, 31. Marino, 125. Bure, 31. Like I said, take that team away now. Shut down that arena. Take the money and feed the homeless with it or something or buy some textbooks. Do something useful with it. Larry Zonka, 14. Paul Warfield, 12. Jay Fiedler's got eight. Jay Fiedler is the most exciting player... <laughs> The most exciting professional athlete ever to play in South Florida, okay? <laughs> wow. I'm faxing that you just... the winner. Huh? huh? I'm faxing you the winner right now. I just wish that uh, he'd faxed it sooner. That's okay. We got another uh, 40 minutes. John Van Beesbrook, the geezer. The geezer who uh, don't like it too dark. He liked the white meat on Thanksgiving yesterday, I'll bet. Jo uh, seven votes for the geezer. Josh Beckett, four. Alonzo Mourning, four. And no votes yet for Tim Hardaway, Jeff Conine, Merck, Mercury Morris, or Chucky Carr. Have none of 256. You just faxed me the winner? Right. I'm waiting on it. Okay. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Maybe we'll get somebody from Montreal to call in before the day is out. Huh? You think so? No. Some ugly person? WQAM. Basic policies is easy and user friendly. From the WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. I, you know, I, right now I can just see everybody turning their radio off as soon as I make this comment. Uh, how bad are the Florida Panthers? That team is the most pathetic hockey team I've ever seen in my entire life. No, they're how not. Do you, first of all, yeah, they, they, how do you lose? Th how do you lose a three goal lead at, on the road? To a pathetic Buffalo team. Yeah. Well, sir, you were right in the first part when you said that everybody's turning the radio off. You're right. Nobody cares. Don't you understand? It's the kiss of death. We cannot talk hockey on this show because nobody cares. Oh, remember all the years when I was stupid and I'd get on there and I'd talk about different things? And, and where are the calls? Why isn't anybody responding to this? Because they don't care. And then, of course, the hockey shows that you insisted that I That's do. That's right. That yeah. you foisted on me when you used to call Rimmer behind my back because you knew we get a good free lunch. That I think you should do again. And then we need Rimmer to get a free lunch no. on the show always? All the, all the time. 567 oh, 0560. So they choked, they gagged, they blew a 3 nothing lead in Buffalo, they lost 4 to 3. They, uh, you know, what can I tell you? It's called LOT, lack of talent. The league is watered down. It's thin. It's thin. How about them Leafs, huh? Oh! That's what counts with 31 points, five wins in a row. It's a miracle. Don't ask me how they're doing it. But like I said, nobody really cares. By Nolan and set up now for Matt Stajan. Stajan with Tucker moving to the front of the net. Pilaj dishes it back. Stajan to Pilaj. Lift shot coming, and no one there to do much with it. How do you like that? There's your good close friend, Matt, uh, Joe Bowen. <laughs> Whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you get old. You think I'm not going to have a good time tomorrow? I could still cancel. You're going to have a great time. I was being sarcastic. Why is that? Just because you're a prick? Right. I mean, you know, when you haven't seen people in 43 years, they're going to be uh, old. old. But so will I. I mean, I'll be old and so will I. So it's, it's a good match. Great times. It's a good match. Yeah, we have a lot to reminisce about, a lot of right. people to backstab and talk about. Right. Talk about how stupid the punks are these days. WQAM, hello. Neil Gobb, yes. Screamless Wonder, how are you, sir? Okay. Um, I, I don't see that fax was... coming over yet, George. That fax never showed up. That's there. I'm Go sure ahead, I lived in Hollywood for like 15 years, listened to you pretty much every day, moved to Tampa. Why can't I listen to you here other than on the Internet? Is there a good reason? Well, what does that mean? I mean, why can't I? I'm driving in my car right now. Why can't I be listening to Neil? Because Neil's not on the air in Tampa. That's why. But we get whatever schnitt. Sir, th this is not a syndicated show. I'm the only talk show host with more than 10 people listening in America who isn't, isn't syndicated on at least 100 stations because my agent is a moron. That's why. He's a simpleton. He's an overgrown child. 
He's he's in non compass penis. That's Norma Kent. His his uh, his name was changed to non compass penis on his birth certificate. Trust me, can't right. get the job done. All right, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Have a great life. It's See that we we had the guy that called before who was happy, and then we got this guy from Tampa allegedly. He's driving his car. First of all, how come he's uh, if he's driving in his car? I guess yeah. he's not doing it right now. I, I don't know what his story was. Just sour. Uh huh. Just sour and negative. How come I can't do this? I don't care. I'm making uh, decent money. I'm doing okay. Tampa. Yeah, that's what I say. Tampa. I'm surviving. I'm scraping a few meals together here and there. The hell with Tampa. In addition to which, we don't want to be on the air in Tampa. If I were syndicated, would we want to go on in Tampa again? No. Oh, what an experiment that was. Talk about mugwumps. All the people that got kicked out of Montreal, they moved them to Tampa. <laughs> that, that's right. It's like it's like Nashville South, man. The people are all inbred. They all look like uh, like they were hatched in a cave somewhere. Let's see. The most uh, no, and I see this is trying to be funny. Garo, uh-huh. your premium was a better passer than Brian Greasy. Good point, Mike, but they're not funny. Not amusing at all. That's Very uh, slim under. list of great athletes are really exciting. How about Mark Clayton? How about Mark Duper? How about Dontrell Willis? What's wrong with these people there, huh? Jesus, K. Christ, but we got Jay Fiedler. He's really exciting. Man. 279 votes, and uh, Danny Boy is just... Uh, and, of course, when Danny Boy was still playing, they ripped him in ass all the time. Well, he never won a championship. He never... Yeah, right. Like George, he never had a 30 share. Therefore, you're an asshole, George. That's right. Even though you were number one in the summer book. Ah, not good enough. Although, I'll tell you one thing, boy. Speaking of the book... We're uh, taking it right up the old uh, pole, I'm guaranteed. We really are. This fall book is, I think fall is going to be the operative word, as in all fall down. Yeah, just like that. Because the sports nerds got all the diaries in that October month, as you saw, and morning went through the roof and the afternoons went ballistic. And, and we like uh, we did okay, but just not, not we just didn't get no benefit from that. I mean, everybody was going on about, well, you know, Farrell is going to be that great lead. And, well, you know, and uh, we got along with him great. I liked him, but, uh, you know, he cooked his own goose which the audience doesn't want to hear that, but it happens to be true. But the fact of the matter is, was he, like, uh, providing us with uh, any goose up in the number there? No. Well, it's too early to even make an impact. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, you got to get some momentum going. In I October? Mean, early here. Well, that was good. That was good for us in October? No, for them. So what are you talking about? I thought you were talking about something else. Like that. 26 past 11 at 560 WQM. I'll tell you one thing. Our good friend Katrina, man, she's lost nine pounds on Balance for Life in just a few days. When she starts, 17th? Yes. And that's including all of these holidays. So in two weeks, she's lost nine pounds on Balance for Life. And I knew Katrina we could trust because she, she's just a delightful person, but she's chubby. She needs to lose some weight, a lot of it. And I know she's very sincere about this. Unlike the beast, who's nothing but a spoiled, rotten brat. And the reason you can lose weight on Balance for Life is that it's easy, just like she did on Thanksgiving. She could have gotten sucked in with all that other crap and eaten tons and tons of stuff that would put the weight back on right away. She didn't do it. She just reached outside the door, grabbed her black sack, and she was happy and satisfied and full all day long. Probably locked herself in a room, but nevertheless, Balance for Life delivers right to your door three delicious gourmet meals and two great snacks every single day in that black sack. You pick them. Because they send you a menu every week. You fax it back to them with your choices for each meal and snack every day that you're on the program. And the food is fresh and delicious. You'll be full all day long. That's the secret. If, you, if you're if you hungry, you're going to cheat. If you're not satisfied, you're going to cheat. If the food tastes like crap, you're going to cheat. That's why Balance for Life can work for you, because the food is all fresh and delicious, nothing frozen, nothing prefab, and like I said, there's plenty of it to keep you full all day long. You'll start seeing results on the scale in just a matter of days. So if you're frustrated with all the other weight loss programs, you haven't been able to do it and keep it off, this could be the answer you've been hoping and praying for, Balance for Life. Call them today, 954 954- Five six eight thirty two twenty nine nine five four five six eight thirty two twenty nine or check them out on the wicked web at balanceforlife dot com. Live and local, this this is five sixty. The radio is all yours. Q A M. Grab my junior, honey. Uh, Jimmy and Danny. Uh, Jimmy and Danny. Danny and Jimmy and Danny and Jimmy and Jimmy and Danny and Jimmy 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 and Jim
Miramar, hello. Uh, yeah, can you hear me okay? I got a question about uh, uh, Jimmy and Danny situation. Uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy and Danny. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, 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 Jimm
I don't know what sport he plays. What, what sport does he play? I don't know. Yeah, you do. Take a guess. Josh, look me in the eye. I don't know. That's scary. With all the hoopla, with all the hype, with all that bandwagon, uh, the Marlin business going on, and you don't know to hell with Dontrell, shame on you, mister. The it's one thing not filter. to be interested in sports, but to be militant about it, to like to refuse to allow it to penetrate your otherwise uh, nimble brain. Hey, that's not an that's option. I, I don't have the ability to decide. It just doesn't go there. You don't have the ability? To that's remember. A lot, a lot yeah. of the callers have said that. If right. I had the ability to do I'd take you out here right now and kick your goddamn teeth in. There's another guy who didn't have the ability. That's why they shipped his ass back to San Francisco, and he got canned there, too. Mm -hmm. Good old Alex Bennett. So who are we putting on the list? Dontrell Willis and Ray Whitney. Okay. I'll get some votes. Oh, I put uh, Pavel on there, too. Or uh, who was the other? Stu. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you want Stu on there? Stu Barnes, yes. All right. Stu. They're still crying about Stu. We goosed our numbers down to about a one share with me talking about Stu Barnes and Chris Wells that year with the packs, packs, and people were looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? Remember those days? Mm hmm And Rick and Suds, Rick Riley was ripping me an ass for talking about Chris Wells and all that crap. Speaking of St. Louis, I remember I had a call. How do you like this? What year would that have been? About eight years ago? Right. Paxson? Sure. And I remember very vividly a caller who says, well, I'm just in town from St. Louis, but whoever this Chris Wells guy is must be awfully important because I hear you talking about him every day on the show. And he was right. Those were the days when I was foolish, when I was talking about things that I thought were interesting and exciting and nobody else cared about because we had a hockey team in South Florida and everybody else said, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, mister? Are you a crazy person? And George said, yes, yes he is. He's old and feeble. You don't get it. He's a slow learner. I remember that call like it was only yesterday. And there was my good close friend Rick Riley, whom you hate like poison, ripping me an ass for talking about Chris Wells. And you were right, Rick. I have to, I was wrong, you were right. Every every dog gets his bone, okay? And Rick had his bone that day. He wouldn't share it. WQAM. Yeah. Yes, What's sir. Nick Bonacani on there. Nick Bonacani. Yeah, the whole seventy two team. Oh, and the whole 72 team. <laughs> Nick Bonacondi, you don't know how to spell that, do you? No, but I'm going to make something up. B-U-O-N-A-C-O-N-T-I, -B -U -B -U Bonacondi. And I'll tell you else, A.J. Dewey, D-U-H-E, A.J. Dewey. Remember him? No. Yeah, you do. He looks just like Joe Klecko. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T. And Verizon Marvelous Song. Let's at least get a big list of names here, then we can wipe it all off at noon when we change the pool. Okay? Make it make it feel like we accomplished something here. Here's something. Liberal Radio Group says it's close to acquiring five stations. Oh my god. Wow. You ready for that? I'm ready. Lock the Don't you think it's gonna have a gigantic impact? No. No. Well, I'm looking into that. People are gonna want to know where the hell they're gonna be. Maybe they're gonna buy WQM and get rid of all that sports crap on here. <laughs> Sports Radio 560. QAM. 560 WQAM. Scrimmage, 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 we we scrimmage, we we scrimmage, we we Mark McGuire, Mark McGuire, Mark McGuire, Mark McGuire, Tim Bowen, we we Tim Bowen, we 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 Ed Cranepool. Who's Ed Cranepool? Is he the guy who was investigated by the Federal Drug and Food Inspection Organization? Oh. The 560 WQAM Morning Sports Zoo. Brought to you by... Do do rent a car. If you want to rent a car, we got a car to do to rent for a zoo. We got a car to rent for a zoo. We got a car to rent for a zoo. We got a car to rent for a zoo. We got a car to rent for a zoo. We got a car to rent for a zoo. We got a car <laughs> 11 43, 17 to noon at Lenny Martez. He's the best. Now, what was he telling us? What kind of a spy report about how Mo made a mistake in the game? Right. Which we have it on tape. But we don't want to play that because it's boring. Just like Mo himself, it's terminally boring. Uh, here's a fact that says, for six or seven years, Mark Clayton made you hold your breath every time he touched it in the ball, too. And you are... Absolutely correct, sir. Get him on there. By the well, says, Pavel couldn't hold Danny's jock. That, that's, see, we're doing so well till you got to that. Well, what, what does that mean? I don't understand. The question is, who was the most exciting athlete? I went to all the Dolphin games in those days. I saw Danny Boy standing there, pump faking, pumping, pumping. He was pumping it and pumping it, and then he'd get all red in the face because the receiver was running a wrong pattern, and he would throw it to be incomplete, and he'd get that look on it, you know... 
all red in the face and exasperated and frustrated, or Sammy would fumble the ball and he'd get all red in the face and exasperated. I'm not taking away from Danny Boy. He was great. And, I, and again, ripped heartlessly by the assholes of South Florida for years. But Pavel Dury, every time he touched the puck, there was something exciting going on. He always had the feeling there was going to be another breakaway any second now. Couldn't carry his job. But Mark Clayton, you're right. I mean, who was Danny throwing it to? Was he just playing with himself? Yes. Mark Clayton, you got him on there? Got him. Just in time for the... Why are we adding more names to this thing? We're going to wrap this thing up at noon. I want to put my ugly poll on there. I know what I'm voting for. Your ugly poll? My ugly poll. Oh, and by the way, I'm going on a new diet, and you're going to laugh at this. I'm going on a mushroom diet. I'm Okay. I'm only going to be eating mushrooms and things that look like mushrooms. <laughs> I see. Here's a fact that says, do you think GW's trip to Iraq? Now, see Glenn freezing his ass off in Connecticut. Glenn, I hate to break the news to you, but I talked about that right out of the box this morning on the show. you got to start listening at 10, Glenn. Get with it. Get a life. He says, do you think GW's trip to Iraq was in, instigated in any way by Hillary's concurrent visit to the area just a hunch? That's what I said. He upstaged Hillary. She was in Afghanistan getting ready to go to uh, Iraq on Friday, and then all of a sudden, Thanksgiving Day, here comes the uh, commander and thief, man. Here he comes with his turkey. How appropriate. He gave him all the big bird. And then he just uh, kind of hightailed it out of there real fast. Hello? Anybody who would say that there was anything, anything at all, not politically motivated with that is a major asshole. I'll tell you that right now. And the same oh, with Hillary. Her trip was, the... uh, right. He was a Democratic certain... investment groups are planning to start a liberal radio network to counterbalance conservative radio hosts like Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Says it's close to buying radio stations in five major cities. The acquisitions would represent a major move toward making the network real. After its con uh, conception was announced in February, many radio analysts and even some Democratic activists predicted the network would face too many challenges to get off the ground, including finding stations to run its programming and bucking a historical record replete with failed liberal radio attempts. But executives with a newly formed company, Progress Media, said late last week that if all went as planned, they would have the network running by early spring in time to be part of the public dialogue during the presidential campaign season. The executives said the stations they were acquiring reached all radios in five of the ten largest media markets, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Philadelphia, and Boston. They said they would buy stations in other markets in the near future. All right. Like maybe this one. We're steady as she goes to have a broadcast debut in early 2004, which gives us time to be part of the election year, said Mark Walsh, the company's chief executive and an Internet entrepreneur formerly with Vertical Net and America Online. The group is planning to present a daily schedule filled with liberal personalities as host of a range of programs, including news analysis segments, talk shows, and entertainment programs in the spirit of The Daily Show, the spoof news program on cable TV's Comedy Central that skewers Washington. That's just what we need is another daily show, not... Joe, John Sinton, Progress Media's president, said the company had hired Liz Winstead, one of the creators of The Daily Show to oversee entertainment programming. Shelley Lewis, a longtime network news producer who was most recently in charge of America Morning on CNN, will oversee news programming. Mr. Sinton be saying. He said Progress Media was pursuing a deal to give the comedian Al Franken a daily talk show. The company whose programming division is to be called Central Air is also talking with representatives of comedian Janine Garafalo. The network has hired Martin Kaplan to be host of an early evening talk show about the news media, and it goes on about they're going to do this and they're going to do that, and Mr. Limbaugh says you own this and you own that, and blah, 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 blah. That's it. Much of the money for the company initially came from Sheldon and Anita Drobny, wealthy Chicago Democrats who originated the project but sold much of their stake to Evan Cohen, a New York investor. This whole thing sounds like a Jew thing to me, you know. Oh, uh -oh. Cohen and Kaplan and uh, Schwartz and uh, Rabinowitz and uh, Goldberg, huh? Franken. And Al Franken? Sounds like a Jew thing to me. Oi! I just mentioned that in passing, too. Jew bastard. 5670560. Oh, what am I giving the numbers out? I don't want any more names for this pool. We've got enough. Because we're going to close it out. When in doubt, we're closing it out. Who do you think was the most exciting athlete to play for a South Florida team? We got uh, 340 votes. Pretty heavy duty, considering Dan Marino has got almost 51%. 173 for Danny Boy. I don't care about sports. 57, 16.5%. Don't give a flying crap. Pavel Burry, 39, who clearly ought to be the winner. 
Larry Zonka, 20. Paul Warfield, 14. Jay Fiedler's got 11. That is enough to make me want to do a big dump on a chair right here and just sit here and just sit here and wallow in it for hours. Just get down on my hands and knees and sniff it. Isn't that disgusting? Hmm? Jay Fiedler's got 11 votes as the most exciting athlete ever to play for a South Florida sports team. That has got to be <laughs> so unbelievably ridiculous and ludicrous and insane. Those people need to be taken off for a sanity test. John Van Beesbrook, the geezer's got nine. Josh Beckett, five. Mercury Morris, four. Alonzo Mourning, four. Tim Hardaway, four. Jeff Conine, two. Chucky Carr got one. And look at this. No votes. Zero. For Ray Whitney, Stu Barnes, Gary Sheffield, Don Trevelis, Nick Bonacotti, A.J. Dewey, and Mark Clayton have got the big oh. zero. Are you ready for that? What? Like they say on the PA. You ready for that? You ready for that? You ready for this? No, you ready for that. This and that. And don't be dissing it. 344 votes and Danny Boy just crushes the competition. We want you back, Danny Boy. Or they want you back. I couldn't give a flying crap one way or the other. Official says Al-Qaeda plans something big. This was uh, on, in USA Today. Unlike that thing that you faxed me that I still believe is uh, fake. Although it looked pretty real, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, I looked that over. First, I saw Nelda Rogers, and I thought, well, you know. But it, it's like a real uh, thing from the Daily Times Monitor, from the uh, British, uh, who the hell knows? But for August the 12th, you would think that if there was any validity to this whatsoever, that uh, somebody would have picked it up somewhere? One would think. One would think. Nelda Rogers. Oh, God. I've been called worse. In Montreal, they said, hey, beautiful. <laughs> A top counterterrorism official says Al-Qaeda operatives dropped plans this year for several small attacks in the USA to focus on plotting a more spectacular assault comparable to the 9-11 attacks. Not that we want to get you nervous or anything like that. We don't want you during the middle of the holidays getting all panicky. But this is just what they're saying. The U.S. counterterrorism official has access to all intelligence on the terrorist group told USA Today this week, last week, that officials had no specific evidence to indicate how or when Al-Qaeda might try to launch a massive strike. I thought we got rid of them, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Well, we do a fantastic job, and we uh, spent all of that money, or at least we could have spent all the money, the $87 billion that were flushing down the toilet on Iraq. Makes me just want to barf. Oh, well, you know, they uh, gotta, they got to, like, uh, put this government in place, and they got to uh -huh. get the schools built, and they got to put together all the stuff that we blew up and all the hospitals and the infrastructure that we blew up. Don't forget the pipeline. You mean the oil that they're not going to burn? That's right. But the official said interviews with al-Qaeda detainees, intercepted communications from suspected operatives and other sources have yielded evidence that Osama bin Laden's network still has a command structure and a determination to launch an attack that might rival these suicide hijackings. It's clear that al-Qaeda wants to strike here and that it continues to seek opportunities for a catastrophic attack, said the official, who acts not to be identified. Recent intelligence reports indicate that al-Qaeda remains fascinated by the idea of using aircraft as missiles, despite the additional security at U.S. airports since the 9-11 attacks, the official said. Oh, yeah. U.S. analysts still say explosives typically used in more limited assaults, including vehicle bombs and suicide attacks, remain al-Qaeda's most likely weapon here. But intelligence reports suggest that some of the network's operatives think that an attack using chemical or biological weapons could be a way to top the 9-11 attacks. And you remember what... Um, that story was we had last, uh, was it on Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Who the hell was it? The former uh, commander over there, what the hell? Uh, the General Tommy Franks, wasn't it? One Tommy Franks. Days. Was it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and he said, if we have a uh, weapon of mass destruction attack, such as like that, chemical or biological oh, weapon, that's right, yeah. that we could kiss the Constitution goodbye. I'm paraphrasing now, uh -huh. but pretty damn close. It was on our website. It's on there. In other words, uh, there's just another excuse. Oh, goodbye to our freedoms, okay? Start goose-stepping. It says it's other. Uh, it's unclear whether Al-Qaeda has group, whether the group has access to chemical or biological weapons, but those weapons represent a more likely concern than nuclear arms, U.S. analysts say. And there it goes. So, I, again, don't get all panicky and nervous. Just live your life, which is what we're going to do anyway. But... It still would make a lot of us feel a hell of a lot better if all of these billions of dollars that they're flushing down the toilet. You see, if they weren't flushing the 87 billion down, then they could have like a real Medicare plan. They could have had a bill that would have really taken care of senior citizens without the big holes in there, all the big gaps. He's starting up again. Yes. I'll tell you who else is starting up. George Soros. 
He's donated almost $5 billion over the years to help emerging democracies in Eastern Europe recover from the shadow of tyranny. Now he's applying the same principles and a large chunk of his fortune to the U.S., where he believes the defeat of George Bush in next year's presidential election is, to quote him, a matter of life and death. Absolutely correct, sir. So far, he's spent more than $15 million, two-thirds of it going to a liberal-leaning group called America Coming Together. Squirt, squirt which intends to mobilize voters in battleground states next November. $3 million of it going to a new Washington think tank run by Bill Clinton's former chief of staff, John Podesta, and $2.5 million to the passionately anti-Bush Internet lobbying group, MoveOn.org, to help pay for TV ads attacking the president, to which we say... All right! Better late than never. I like how mamby-pamby he is. Political donations on this scale have precedents on the right. Figures such as Richard Mellon's scafe... And Howard Amundsen have given hundreds of millions of dollars over several decades on political projects, both high, setting up the Heritage Foundation think tank, the driving engine of the Reagan presidency, and low, bankrolling investigations into President Clinton's sexual indiscretions and the suicide of outhouse insider Vince Foster. Oh, didn't the Clintons kill Vince Foster? Just turn on Rush. He's out in five minutes. I think the Clintons killed uh, Vince Foster and Bud Foster and uh, Jake Foster and, and Bananas Robin. Foster, too. Didn't they kill Bananas Foster? I believe so. Clinton always was uh, tough with that banana. But on the left, it's almost unheard of, this kind of fanatical fundraising. Mr. Soros has given money to political campaigns before. This, though, is very different. In recent interviews, he's likened the with, it or us, or, or, with us or against us rhetoric of the Bush administration to the political language of Nazi Germany. And once again, he is... Absolutely correct, sir. And in the forthcoming book, The Bubble of American Supremacy, he argues that the destructive arrogance of the White House in Iraq and elsewhere is like an overheating of the stock market that must end and will be corrected. The Hungarian-born financier and philanthropist describes the Bush administration's policies as a crude form of social Darwinism. I call it crude because it ignores the role of cooperation in the survival of the fittest and puts all the emphasis on competition. And he explains why the current administration is so much at odds with the driving ideology of his Worldwide Open Society Institute. The supremacist ideology of the Bush administration stands in opposition to the principles of an open society which recognize that people have different views and that nobody is in possession of the ultimate truth, he writes. When President Bush says, as he does frequently, that freedom will prevail, he means that America will prevail. In a free and open society, people are supposed to decide for themselves what they mean by freedom and democracy and not simply follow America's lead. A chasm is open between America and the rest of the world. Unlike other critics who made casual comparisons between the Bush White House and the Nazis, Mr. Soros speaks with some authority he survived the German occupation of Budapest as a boy. As a boy. How do you like that? All right. I love that man. He is going to open up that wallet and when in doubt, pump him out and say bye-bye to the fascist Bund. Let's say bye-bye to this poll. What do you say? Okay. I know you're depressed about that. You probably want to hear a lot more names. Right, I'm beside Who myself. Who do you think was the most exciting athlete ever to play for South Florida team? Dan Marino, 183. Overwhelming winner, almost 50%. Out of 374 votes, Danny Boy. Don't care about sports, 62. Pavel Burry, 43. Larry Zonka, 22. Paul Warfield, 14. Jay Fiedler, 12. The Dirty Dozen. John Van Geeserbrook, 10. Ja uh, Josh Beckett, 6, Tim Hardaway, 5, Lonzo Mourning, Zoe, 4, Mercury Morris, 4, Jeff Conine, 3, Mark Clayton, 3, Don Trell Willis got a pair, Chucky Car uh, Carr's got one, and no votes for Ray Whitney, Stu Barnes, Gary Sheffield, Nick Bonacotti, or A.J. Dewey. What a sad day. Live and local. This is Sports Radio 560, QAM. And Homeland Security, Tom Ridge, advising you to put duct tape on your radio when I raise the warning color to pink for the Neil Rogers 12 to 1 hour. Just take exhibit A off the shelf. Might be easier if he killed himself. Yes. That little scumbag won't get no parole. It's time to deep friendly point Malvo. They got injections that are lethal. People are waiting for them on their phone. But I don't think that that's the way to go. I say we deep friendly boy now, bo. All right. Let's send a deep friendly boy now, bo. Cook him up just like a filet of soul. Maybe go tie him to a telephone pole. It's time to deep friendly boy Malvo. Oh! 
1201, just fry his ass and save a lot of money, man. All these stupid ass trials that they're going through. First with John uh, Schme- uh, Schmegma Mohammed, whatever the hell your guy's name was, and now Lee Boyd Malvo. Why have we wasted our time with that, huh? Nah, I don't know. They're out there uh, killing people out of the trunk of a car. Just fry their ass and get it over with. Okay, I'm adding Tampa to the uh, pool. Okay. I was inspired by that first that depressing caller we had last hour. Oh, how come we can't hear you over? Because I'm not on the air in Tampa and don't want to be on the air in Tampa. Like I said, we already went through that disaster, WSUN. Check back with us later. There might be something on you like. Check back with us later. Man. What a bunch of nose-picking yahoos. That's the west coast of Florida. Can you name me one place on the west coast of Florida that you would call, like, civilized? No. I mean, seriously, can you... Uh, Sarasota? No. No. Huh? no. Clearwater? No. no. Venice? No. Englewood? No. Everglades Oklahoma? City. That's not on the West Coast. What? Everglades City. How about Panama City? No. <laughs> Bunch of Bible-thumping assholes, beautiful beaches, but the wrong people. See, that like Montreal. It's a beautiful city and very European. And they got like a, I mean, the shopping there and the eating and everything is just the wrong people. They need a people transplant. That's what they need in Tampa. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. For the first sign that there's something wrong is too much orange hair, you know? Too mm-hmm. many cartoon character looking people. Orange haired rednecks who, uh, most of those people have been like uh, kicked out of the trailer parks all over the U.S. They've been, they've been kicked off, they, they've been, uh, refused admission to the Jerry Springer audience and they've also been oh, kicked oh. out of trailer parks. What does that tell you? Yeah. That's the people in Tampa. What a bunch of Neanderthal. Uh, I, I just can't get over it. You go over there and you like scour. You look around. You go to a shopping mall and you say, "Is there anybody? Is there a human being here?" No. No chance. Tampa. That'll start collecting some votes. In what city? See, I don't like the way I worded this, and I don't want Eric to have to change the wording because it's it's poorly worded. I said that to you before the show, and you're just so lazy. Yeah, I don't care. You know, you don't care. Like, I'm not argue with you right. about No, you're your right. Wording. I don't care either. See, you didn't let me finish. You just Sorry. want to argue. I don't care either. What do we care? It's just, it's just for fun. It's just something like let the people at their, uh, vent. Just vent a little bit, you know? Just open up your cheek and <coughs> vent it out. And I will, and, you know, see, I digress. But now that I'm talking about farts. Yeah. I gotta say this. Before I get to the Rick Sanchez story, which I see a lot of similarity. <laughs> no, no, the nutritional nuts, you know, the, the vegetarians, the ones who eat a lot of, oh, uh, oh, you know, oh, sheer oh. garlic on their ass. They're always saying, well, you know, if you're really healthy, if you eat the right foods, then uh, your farts have no odor. You know, when you emit gas. Oh, yeah, right. You, you know what I'm talking about. You've heard yeah, that. Yeah, I've heard it. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that it. takes a good part of, uh, in fact, that poll you had on there on Friday, that should have been on there, farting. That's right. Sniffing your own farts. But if that isn't one of the great things to live for. And I still say, man, in the shower, what I'm going to do one of these days, like, you know, if I'm really bored, I'm just going to get like a, a couple of big cans of Heinz baked beans. <laughs> I'm going to wait a couple of hours, and I'm going to go into the shower, and I'm just going to have me the time of my life. I'm serious, man. There's nothing like being in a real good steamy shower and just <laughs> cutting away. Wow. You know what I'm talking about. And you're sniffing, and I don't care all you snooty people out there who think that your stuff don't stink. You're not fooling us. In between digging for seeds, you're probably farting your brains out and, and, and wafting it up toward uh, your nose with, your, with your, the palm of your hand. You also got a really nice wet sound, too. When you're the mm, God, there's just something so beautiful and aromatic. And I still say it's one of the great mysteries of life, how you can cut exactly the same fart in Publix and all of a sudden like, oh, no, I didn't do that. You know what I mean? Right. Real aromatic, just a real na- uh, nasal lining burner. And it's like the worst thing in history. But if you're all alone in the shower, like maybe under the covers, you're alone in bed, which you can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how's that list coming? Montreal 8, Paris 7, and Tampa don't have any votes yet. Out of the first few votes on that poll, get serious. In what city in the world are the highest percentage of people? Are they very, very ugly? That's what I meant to say, but they'll understand. we got Montreal, Paris, and Tampa. I'm sure they'll have some others, or not, as the case may be. Here's some good news. See, unlike that fat butt-licking Paul Castronova, your good close friend, <laughs> Unlike him, we don't feel compelled on this show to pretend to be big fans of people who are major assholes who are reviled by all, like Rick Sanchez. We can't stand Rick Sanchez. We find, in fact, how would you like to smell his farts, huh? Oh, no, thank you. Wow. Can you even imagine with that fat ass? Wreck him. He's got a much fatter ass than I. And he's only a little guy. He's only about two feet tall. 
I'll never forget the day he came in. I don't know what the hell he was doing there. Of course, he was working right next door when we were at IOD. And he was sitting up front in, by Cheryl's desk. Oh, right. he's a little guy, kind of funny looking. Yeah, and he, I realized he came up to my knee. He's about two feet tall. So they must do like Bob Mayer. They must prop him up on about six telephone books. The only difference is that we like Bob Mayer. That's the difference. A lot. Even yeah. though Bob just turned 90. Sweep results show Rick Sanchez struggling. You're struggling. Like the struggling lady used to say, you're struggling. Remember her? No. Well, that's before your time. I had, yeah, she was like the uh, tree lady, kind of. Uh -oh. You're struggling. Only the tree lady, at least, was nice. She just had a crazy son. Glenn so Garvin in the Herald writes, it hasn't been a happy homecoming for Rick Snatches, at least in terms of viewers. His highly, see, MSNBC, when you get dumped off MSNBC, which has no viewers at all, then you know the jig is up. Like, like Donahue, you know. He gave it a shot. You're done, Phil. Go back and vote for Nader again, you idiot. He's done. Buchanan and Press. They had a pretty good show compared to the other crap on here. No audience. They're done. Anyway, speaking of Rick Sanchez, his highly promoted Channel 6 afternoon talk show was hammered in the Nielsen ratings released on Friday, finishing even behind Japanese monster cartoons. The Rick Sanchez show, in fact, barely registered at all in the ratings, says a highly sarcastic Glenn Garvin. Nice going, Glenn. Putting in, pulling in just 2% of the viewers in his weekday 4 p.m. time slot. Rivaling probably the numbers we had on Whammy. Remember those days? Mm -hmm. It was clobbered not only by rival talk shows like Oprah and Judge Judy, which both outdrew Sanchez by margins of about 7 to 1, but the Japanese cartoon Pokemon on Channel 39 had double the audience. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. God. Well, actually, some Pokemon and the Pillsbury Doughboy is a good combo because a lot of people confuse Rick Sanchez with the Pillsbury Doughboy. Pika? The November rating sweeps period that ended Thursday was the first since the Rick Sanchez show debuted in mid-October after Sanchez returned to South Florida from a two-year stint as anchor at MSNBC where they got caught on to him pretty quick. Sanchez piled up power. See, this, this is wrong, Glenn. Sanchez piled up powerhouse ratings in the 80s and 90s, anchor of WSVN's tabloid newscast. But so far, at least, viewers seem less enchanted with him as a talk show host. No, see, he didn't pile up the big numbers. The Channel 7 News piled it up. He happened to be the, the news reader at the time, the news emoter. Right? He was emoting the news. <laughs> he was in motor mouth. All right, breathlessly. Channel 7 News. And the fact of the matter is, people hated him then just as much as they do now. And who the hell is going to turn on Rick Sanchez to watch him do a talk show? Why would anybody want to do that? Would you? No. no. God. And obviously, neither is anybody else. Boy, and, and why did you fax me that thing about uh, Gary Apremian twice? Which Was that the one you were saying was the definitive you answer? You said that it uh, hadn't gone you faxed, through. You're faxing me all of these again. Glenn in Connecticut? That's different. Oh, I see. It's a different one. I, okay, apologize. I apologize. I apologize. Sorry, I did miss the first five minutes of the show today. As my asshole boss asked me a question at that time, I should have known you'd pick up on the Bush Hillary propaganda battle. Well, how could I not, Glenn in Connecticut? How could anybody not see through that? Even Moron saw through that. Absolutely. Christ. She shows up there for a good photo op in Afghanistan and Iraq. And hey, guess what, Swillery? And you know what that tells me? That tells me they're scared crapless of her. Isn't that embarrassing? No, no, really, they're they're scared to death of her, and I don't know why. There's something about her. Uh, I, I I just don't know what it is. We took that poll here a couple of weeks ago. She did great. Yeah, they love Hillary. I, I don't know what that is all about. Anyway, Mike, who's becoming out of control, he says, I used to go to school at USF in Tampa, and would regularly come home to Fort Lauderdale via flight that originated in Cleveland. Wow. He says, I've never seen so many fat, ugly, smelly people in my life. So there's another one for the poll. Cleveland. Yeah. The mistake by the lake. Wow. Haven't been there in a long time since that football game. Forty-three years ago, went to a football game, the Giants and the Browns, in the snow. Froze my ass. And they're all sitting up there passing bottles around in the stands, you know. Bottles of Palm Beach water. Troublemaker says, early entry for your next poll. Had the unfortunate experience of going out for breakfast in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. But any city in North Carolina should be the winner. We'll pick Asheville, thank you. Never have I seen so many gigantic, fat, and pasty white people, young and old, waddling down the aisle to gorge themselves on hominy grits and biscuits. Yuck, he says. <laughs> <laughs> written, oh. written like someone who's been there. Yeah. Y'all come back now. He says, since it's my birthday and to kill a little time, I was wondering what the latest 
Joe Zagakli, hey, yell, would sound like at the point of the glare, give a glitter song where everyone's supposed to yell, hey, I think he's even on cue. Well, we'll, we'll find out someday, I guess, huh? Because we don't have the technical ability to do that. Sure we do. We do? So I'll fire off Gary Glitter and you can fire Joe. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, you want me to do, you want to do it now? Now, now, wait a minute. What is Joe saying here? Oh, my? Yeah. Oh. Do it. You missed it. Hit it. There? I don't know what he's talking about. No. He says the point where everyone's supposed to yell, hey. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my! Oh, my! I don't think it's going to work. No. Oh, my! Oh, my! No, you know where it comes, Greg. You know right. where you have to wait here. It's, it's coming. not going to work. It's coming. Squirt, squirt. Oh my! Hey, you know what? That did work. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh! Okay, that's it. Kill it. <laughs> Not a bad idea. That, that killed some good time. So, Rick Sanchez, you're struggling, Rick. Nobody wants to watch your sorry ass, stupid ass TV show, okay? Christ. But, you know, it's another one of those guys, like Michelle Gill and the same thing, a legend in their own mind. Another guy who was uh, much ado about nothing, small potatoes, a silly person that nobody took seriously. He was kind of like a uh, Tony Cigaretto kind of guy, you know, silly in a different way. That's another good poll question for today. Can you name one person who ever went to the University of Miami who wasn't a silly clown? The Beast. Think about it. Huh? The Beast. There you go. He's the poster child. Tony Cigaretto, Clarence. Silly clowns. That's, they pump them out there, man. It's like a factory, a silly clown factory. Wouldn't surprise me if John Wayne Gacy spent some time there. Clown College. 1213 at 5 in Sarasota. Clown College. <laughs> oh, that's a law. That goes back a long time. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, imagine this. Imagine Todd Reck bleeding to death right in front of your uh, house. All right. Imagine zero closing costs, zero application fees, zero credit bureau fees, zero discounted points. It's the last mortgage you'll ever need. It's the revolutionary only one mortgage from Financial Group, now with an interest rate of just 1.95%. That's right. You heard right. And it means like if you have a $200,000 loan, your payments are a mere 738 bucks a month. Once you refinance or get you a new home mortgage from Financial Group, you'll never, ever pay closing costs again. If you want to find out about it, call 1-800-940-LEND. Grab yourself real financing par with a low-rate mortgage. You can move to your next property without further cost or expense. The only one mortgage from Financial Group. Call 1-800-940-LAND for details. It's a whole and exciting new way to buy. You pay zero underwriting fees, zero dock fees, zero prepayment penalty, zero closing costs, even when you move to another property. Get yourself financing at the amazingly low rate of just 1.95%. And don't forget, never, ever pay closing costs again. Call Financial Group today. Hop on it. Call 1-800-940-LEND, 940-L-E-N-D. They're an equal housing lender. Restrictions apply. Rate subject to change monthly, 5.19 APR. Live, Live and local. We are Sports Radio 560. QAM. Q- on Inside the Behind the True Hollywood Celebrity Music Biography Profile Story. They wrote the theme song to The Sopranos, and we've never heard from them again. Tonight. We go looking for Alabama 3. I woke up this morning, got myself a gun. Alabama 3? I never heard of him. A legitimate New Jersey businessman who wants to be known only as a Guido. Hey, that's Guido, not a Guido. That makes it sound generic. You trying to reduce me to a cultural stereotype, you Ivy League pr- I'm sorry. Do go on. Like I was saying, I don't know from Alabama 3. What I do know is they write this song, and suddenly certain criminal elements of our society are in the spotlight again, and they are not happy. And maybe they would like to kill Alabama 3 in a painful way, and be willing to pay handsomely for it, too. With good money riding on it, we began our search for Alabama 3, a band formed in London, England, by nightclub DJ Larry Love, whose real name was Robert Sprague. We soon found Robert Sprague's father. Uh, Alabama 3? Uh, no, mate, no. Uh, my son Robert, I, I don't even have a son. I, I never could. Uh, low sperm count. Why pace me for it, but what can you do? I'm <laughs> Dad, who are you talking to? Oh, for Christ's sake, Robert, get back in the secret room. But I'm tired of... Go on, you stupid nip. <coughs> that was...
almost nothing, nothing at all. It may indeed have been nothing, but to us, it looked a lot like the man behind Alabama 3 was hiding like a frightened little girl in his father's basement. So we did what any respectable journalist in need of quick cash would do. We let Guido know about it. Hey, we know he's in <laughs> Well, whatever happens next, we never had this conversation, though I make myself clear. <laughs> it's a big, juicy, sopping wet like a show business. Tonight, on Inside the Behind. From 18 at 560, WQMC, you know that story that you uh, faxed me earlier that I got sucked into reading? Yeah. That you got sucked into faxing me that I got sucked into reading? Yes. Uh, Al Martin, raw.com, is one of these conspiratorial, uh, wiggy, oh, no. wacky uh, websites. Not another one of those. Another one of those. The conspirators and yada, 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 and uh, I don't know. So I just uh, checked out the website, and so I'm going to tear that up along with all the other stuff. Yeah, all those hundred people just died mysteriously. They just disappeared. Okay, whatever you say. You know, there's Fine enough with valid material without having to make stuff up about these people. Forty-six, that's right, forty-six votes on this poll. Maybe this poll ain't going to go over that big, but it just, uh, let me say it again. See, two things I would say, even though they were all ugly people in Montreal, all of them. I mean, not just ordinary ugly, but very, very French, uh, nasty, ugly, fat, mm. gross. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, the most, the most useful thing that you can do in your life, I don't care what anybody uh, says, is travel. Okay. Because the the less you travel, the more parochial you are, and the mm -hmm. less significant your life is. The less you know about the world, and you just your your existence is sad. And I'm not saying you have to have a lot of money to travel. Well, but you do. No, you don't. To travel you anywhere. Have to have good. A lot. It all depends on where we're talking about traveling too. Yeah, right. if you want to go to Europe, if you want to go to exactly. Hawaii, exactly. yeah, it might cost you a few bucks. Yeah. But I'm I'm serious. You look in the travel sections of your newspapers. You go online and you see these different deals. And I mean, you know, a schlepper like you, you're not going to fly business class anyway. You're going to fly in cargo if they'll take your ass. Steerage. That's right. You'll fly with a cattle back there. You'll let them put you into one of them cages with the dogs. <laughs> Anything. I'm I'm telling you, that's the way to go. Is find out about the world and go there and see it. Because anybody that tells you, oh, don't go to so and so, it really blows. Don't don't pay any attention to them. How many times have we had that experience, like restaurants? Oh, don't go there, it stinks. Well, go try it for yourself, you know? And then you find out they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Like Vegas, when people would call up and go, oh, I went to Vegas. <laughs> Screw them. I'm going to tell you right now, anybody who goes to Vegas and has a bad time is A, either a moron and a loser, or B, lost more money than they wanted to, or C, yeah. went there thinking they were going to win money and lost. Vegas is a place you make a donation. It's like charity. Right. It's like going to a charity benefit, but you have a great time. That's all. And if by some miracle you break even, or you lose very little, or you come home winning even, then you go, all right, all right. you know, what a great time. And I actually came home with more cash than I left with, right. paid for the whole trip, and then some. I'm even in Vegas. Well, there you go. What's not polite? Josh, Josh is up, he says. How much? 250. About 30, man. That's something. 250. Of course, he didn't tell you where he put the decimal point. But what, the, what difference is it? If you go there, and we've had a few of these people over the years call it on the show, a lot of you have heard it. Oh, I went there based on your say so and your recommendation, and I thought it was suck, uh, sucky and it, uh, it was horrible. Those are sour, nasty people. If you're one of those people, don't go anywhere. And in fact, in your case, I would say just the opposite. Don't leave home. Right. Don't, don't leave the export, house. Don't export your misery. Don't go out. Which is South Florida's favorite occupation is making everybody else as miserable as they are. Don't do it. Stay the hell where you are. It's like people that call, oh, yeah, I moved here from Toronto. Toronto sucks. What do you like about it? You know what? If you don't like it, please don't ever come back here. I'm begging you. Don't ever come back here. Things are too good. We don't need you here. Everything's fine. Sun is shining again right now. It's 34 degrees. What the hell more could you want, right? Maybe a few degrees. Well, what's the big deal? Now, look at that, 35 degrees. Oh. All right, things are looking up already as I speak. I just checked it again. It's 35 freaking degrees. This business of people that, you'll, you'll find that most of the people that talk the, the biggest about this place, that place, they've never even been there. They've right. never been more than 10 blocks from home. When you realize that 25% of American people have passports, that leaves 75% of Americans with no passport. You got a passport, Josh? No. Loser. George, you got a passport? No. Loser. Right. Okay, look at that. Batting a thousand in that room. 
In that studio, we're batting a thousand. But I still manage to cross borders every now and again. With a uh, with a birth certificate. No. But with, <laughs> with a disguise with Groucho glasses. No, seriously, you can get a birth certificate. You get into Canada or Mexico, right? Yeah, the Bahamas too. I've been with a birth certificate. Oh, there you go, the Bahamas. Now we're talking. If you have a birth certificate, you can go to the Bahamas. Yeah, man. That's really seeing something, huh? Talk about rip off uh, central of the universe. Christ, if you want to see a bunch of Schwarzers, just walk outside there. You don't got to go to the Bahamas to see a bunch of dark folks who are going to rip your ass off. Christ. I'm talking about, just like my trip to Montreal these last three days, I don't regret going there. We had a good time. Food was sensational. I ate way too much. Well, what else are you going to do there? Sit around looking at ugly people? <laughs> can sit around and look in the mirror if I want to do that and never have to leave the apartment. Just go and see places. Get around, you know, because pretty soon they're going to stick your ass in a box and there's no heaven and there's no hell and there's no purgatory and there's no afterlife and there's no God and there's no Jesus and there's no Moses and there's no Buddha. So you can either be a real person and get with it and, and appreciate life while you got it or you can just sit around and, uh, you know, like that, which I find that too many of South Florida are like like that. That's the problem. That's one of the reasons that it's revolting to so many of us. In what city in the world do you find the highest percentage of ugly, very ugly people? 55 votes, 20 say Tampa. Oh. I have no problem with that. Mm -mm. Montreal 17, Paris 15. And, of course, Montreal and Paris both suffer from the same malady. You know what that is? Frog. That's it. They have frog disease. Too many French people. Warts. There's nothing wrong with Paris, man. It's a beautiful city. Their big problem, though, the people. It's like South Florida. Same thing. Beautiful palm trees, the ocean, the beaches, beautiful hotels. The hotels here. The restaurants. The people. We need a people transplant. How many people can we keep? About 30, man. The rest of them, bye-bye. Cleveland's got two, and Asheville, North Carolina's got one. We'll get some more cities on there. Mark my words. 5670560. Oh, I'm not just talking about, see, there's a difference between nasty people, miserable people. We're talking ugly. I mean, really like mutant ugly. In fact, I got another one. Okay. Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville. How could I forget? I spent that one month in 1980 in Nashville, Tennessee. It's felt like 45 years. You have never seen, again, it's like, it's like a sea of orange and purple hair. The kind okay. of people you see, the kind of people you see only as cartoon characters the rest of your life, when you go to Nashville and Tampa, you'll say, holy crap, there actually are people like that. Mugwumps. Ha ha. Ha 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 Y'all come back. The most narrow-minded Neanderthal gruesome, now I don't know about Montreal, because in addition to which, of course, you hear a lot of that French up there. Oh man. We they got French up the ass. In fact, in Montreal, all the signs are in French first, right. English second. Which kind of throws you off because, I mean, it's in Canada. It's, it's in an English-speaking country. But and, and it's the law, too, right? It's the law in, my, in Quebec. We, 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 that, that's, what, <laughs> that's all they say. Yeah. One guy, that old guy that was chasing me down St. Catherine Street, he said... I like the wee-wee. And I whacked him with my umbrella once. Had to chase him away. God. WQIM. Yes. Yes, sir. Steve Kane was bashing the crap out of you this morning. Well, good for him. I hope he had a good time doing it, asshole. WQIM, hello. Just one second. Hi. Yes, sir. <laughs> Neil, uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Sorry, man. You caught me off guard. Um, uh... Did uh, did you happen to notice during the uh, halftime? Uh, did, did you watch the uh, the Dallas game on Thanksgiving? No, I did not. Not one second of it. Well, it, the uh, I, I enjoyed the game because I enjoyed watching the Cowboys getting beat up. But, yeah. But um, uh, the you know the halftime report was really sickening. It was this uh, guy. What's his name? Toby Keith. Yeah, right wing asshole. Yeah. Exactly. He's running around the country right now, waving the flag, mm -hmm. basically encouraging everybody to mindlessly support everything that the government's doing um, with this war. That guy, you know, he's a big time flag waver. Well, what time was that doing USA, in the middle right? of a uh, football game? Why was that on halftime? I don't. You know, it was the halftime. Oh, it was in Dallas. Festivities. That's right. Yeah. Right. It was in Dallas. Check this out. The guy was playing a Takamine guitar, made in Japan. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for, for the United States, but I'm, 
I'm, I'm actually for for do, for putting my money where my mouth is by putting Americans to work for God's sake. Yeah. This guy doesn't do that. Not only that, so I went to the Takamini website. He's shilling for Takamini. He's saying he's trying. He, he's basically a paid. Sounds like a pretty cockamini thing to me. And why the hell would anybody be watching the halftime show anyway? It's time to go out <coughs> and get some refills. Okay. Twelve twenty-eight at five sixty. WQM big news. Hallett Pontiac GMC has now become Auto City Pontiac GMC of Pinecrest. My good close personal buddy Tom Lehman has sold the dealership to Lomberto Perez of Auto City Pontiac Buick uh, GMC of Homestead. What did I say? Auto City Buick Pontiac. That's right. Expect the same great Neil deals and customer satisfaction you're accustomed to. As Hallett's longtime general sales manager Joe Prieto is still there. He still got his hand firmly on it and the controls too. Stop by Auto City Pontiac GMC of Pinecrest for great Neil Rogers deals on all makes and models in stock. Take advantage of 0% financing for up to 72 months or save up to nine grand with rebates and incentives as well. That's right, Neil deals continue with the new Auto City Pontiac GMC of Pinecrest in the same great location. You know it by now, 13401 South Dixie Highway, that's US 1, right across the street from the prestigious Fall Shopping Center. Open every day, seven days a week. If you want more info, call that Neil Rogers Neil Deal Hotline. It's a toll free call. One triple eight five three four forty two eleven. That's one triple eight five three four forty two eleven. Don't forget, all offers subject to credit approval. See the folks at Auto City Pontiac GMC of Pinecrest for details. The brand new and exciting Auto City Pontiac GMC of Pinecrest. Low prices without the high pressure. My and local. This is Sports Radio five sixty. U A U A M. Just, just tell me, just tell me what your problem is. Luciano Pavarotti, now the fattest of the three tenors, is back, stretching his vocal abilities in a way never intended by Mother Nature. In a new CD box set, Pavarotti does Motown. Pavarotti does Motown. If you thought he was good with an aria, wait till you hear him work over the real classics. Pavarotti does Motown gives you the chance to listen to solid gold tunes brought to life in a way you never hoped for. I'm gonna wait to the midnight hour. That's when my love comes tumbling down. I'm gonna Okay, so technically that one wasn't Motown. But don't tell Luciano or Wilson Pickett. So what are you waiting for? If you like ordering CDs that you can't get in stores, call now to get a collection that will sit in your CD rack gathering dust for years to come. Sugar pie, honey buns, you know that I love you. I can't help myself. I want to you one nobody else. Paparazzi does Motown. Get it while supplies last. By the way, supplies are not likely to run out anytime soon. 1233 at 560 WQM. Happy holidays, man. We're not going to pee on your parade. Let's be happy. What do you say? No. Or let's be angry. <sighs> 78 votes. In what city in the world do you find a highest percentage of really very, very ugly people? See, even an ugly guy like me, I can take a poll like this because one of the great things of life is you don't have to look good to appreciate people who do. Right. See? As long as your eyes are good. That's right. Because if everybody if everybody looked the same, there would be no good-looking people. That's right. They would all look ordinary. That's right, because everything is relative. Quite frankly, I'd rather go to a city where everybody is, like, ordinary than Montreal, eh? <laughs> 78 votes. Tampa, 25. That's a good choice. Montreal, 22. Paris, 18. It's the frog factor. You've heard of the fear factor? we got the frog factor starting soon <laughs> on a network near you. Probably Fox. Cleveland, 6. Asheville, 4. And Asheville's got 3. Just went on there, Nashville. You're going to love Nashville. you got to say it right like it's spelled V-U-L, Nashville. There's another hockey team with no reason to exist, even though they're playing pretty well right now. Nashville, Predators, no reason to exist. Buffalo, Florida Panthers, Pittsburgh Penguins. This is it, by the way, all you Penguin fans. All uh, How many of them are there? About 30, man. This is the last season. You can take it to the bank. WQAM, hello. Hi. Can I speak to Neil, please? Speaking. Oh, Neil. Okay. Um, I had uh, one thing for your poll. Okay. Reading, Pennsylvania. Reading, Pennsylvania. Yes, it's near Lancaster, where they have a lot of uh, high-fat foods. Right. Okay. And the other thing I want to talk to you about, I'm on my lunch break. Couldn't pull earlier. Guess what a mummer was? 
Right. What is a okay. mummer? Okay. In Philadelphia, they have a mummer parade on New Year's, New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. There's supposedly a bunch of macho men who go out and get drunk the night before, stay up all night drinking, then dress up in feathers and sequins, and France down Broad, Broad Street, <coughs> excuse me, uh, playing uh, when the Saints go marching in. Oh, no. That's a mummer. How embarrassing. Yes. I know. I'm ashamed to be from there. Thanks for the bad news. Okay, sorry. And have a great day. Bye. Reading, Pennsylvania, get that on there. Never been there. Heard of it. Never been there. Got Ever it. been to Reading? No. Don't go. Not PA. The Mummers. We all know uh, the Hummer, the Humper, <laughs> but uh, nobody knows what the hell a Mummer was until today. So they just dress in drag? Is that what you They mean? dress up in drag and they go around singing when the Saints come uh, marching in. Mm. And for a minute I thought it might be a gay thing. <laughs> Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. Don't go to Montreal. That's my my best advice to you. Okay. I mean, what have you see when you talk to other people? Like I said before, they they give you all kinds of stories. You know, everybody's got stories, and people say, "Oh, Montreal, what a great city." I mean, you know, it, and and in a way, it is. It's just got the wrong people. It's got the the strangest, most bizarre people anywhere north of Nashville, I think. Anywhere north of Reading, PA. Maybe all the good-looking people were off. Uh, oh, that Canadian Thanksgiving is different. All right, so much for my theory. No, no, we already had our Thanksgiving last uh, last month. No, I think they shipped all the good-looking people to Toronto. And then they allowed me to come in because I was like one of the quota. They had X number of ugly people. So they let me come in as part of the quota part of the time. Beautiful people here. Beautiful people in Ottawa, so I'm told. But in Montreal, you got to be <coughs> frog ugly. WQAM. Yeah, I want to talk to Neil. Speaking. This is Neil. Hey. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, about your poll, uh, just the city that you left out of South Florida, I had a friend come down. We went to South Beach. After we went to South Beach, we went to Hollywood Beach. Right. And his comment was, well, other people need a place to go, too. Okay. Uh, Hollywood Beach is full of uh, really French ugly Canadians, people. though. Keep right. that in there's mind. Of, well, that's right. There's a lot of frogs there, and that probably mm-hmm. explains a lot of that. But uh, at Hollywood Okay. Thanks, Pally. Thank right. Hollywood, Florida, which is still the frog factor. <laughs> See, if if you've been to Hollywood Beach, which I'm sure a lot of you have, and then you go to Montreal or you go to Paris, and then you see, oh, that's what the origins of that all are. Like right. I said before, those fat, disgusting people in speedos, they were fat and disgusting and grotesque and ugly when they were like middle age, <clears throat> when they were young, when they were children. I mean, granted, look, every, everybody has seen ugly children. Like, everybody always says, oh, your baby is the most, isn't that the cutest baby you ever saw? Yeah. And a lot of times you're thinking, Jesus Christ, what an ugly freaking baby. With a misshapen head. Is it human? But it's just polite to say, but, but I mean, little kids. I mean, little kids ordinarily are like, they're either cute or they're like, Nondescript, you know what I mean? Right. You don't usually get ugly until you're like in your 20s, get real ugly. No, I've seen some really ugly babies. No. You know what I'm talking about. Sure. But, I mean, people of all ages, infants, I think even the dogs there were ugly. <laughs> the one thing I will say, it's a clean city. Very clean. Very easy to get around with that underground thing. How come more cities don't do that? Now, you can't do it in Florida because you're like, uh, you'd have to build it under, uh, I, I was underwater. I wasn't joking when I asked you, are you allowed to roller skate in that underground? Did you see anyone skating? No. Okay. Why would you ask something like that? Because that would be paradise. To be able to skate around the city, and it's like... No, no, I don't don't think they would let you do that, because it's very um, very antiseptically clean, almost almost nauseatingly clean. I mean, just, you could eat off the floors, and they have all of these upscale shops, and it never ends. I mean, everything is just so sparkling and clean, you know? So I guess it goes to show you can't have everything, right? Right. It's a horrible, horrible uh, place. <laughs> and, well, maybe the people that live there are, are immune to the uh, the ugliness. Maybe they're all used to it. Maybe they, no, they, they at, least, at least that way they don't have to be jealous. Right. They don't have to worry about some hot-looking guys banging my wife because there are no hot-looking guys, in addition to which who would want to bang my wife because she's ugly anyway. So it kind of like all balances out. Very, very strange. And, and I know you think I'm exaggerating. <clears throat> I have this tendency to, like I've told you 50 million times, right, exaggerate. Right. I, I'm not. Never, I'm telling you exactly it. the way it is. If my if my life would have depended on seeing somebody good looking, male or female, I'd, I'd be dead right now, except for those two, uh, the waitress and the hostess in that restaurant in Bocaccino. But fabulous restaurants. Oh man, the fa- 
and just gigantic portions, really great food. See, every time you go someplace new, even if it sucks, you say to yourself, that was that was an interesting experience. You find something, except, sure. of course, for the negative people, like the ones who go to Vegas, lose a couple hundred bucks, say, ah, oh, Vegas sucks, that blows, you're full of crap, it's your fault, you know. People are just looking to be unhappy. Yeah. Like some of the people at the hockey games, for example, which is another reason I'm glad that uh, when I'm there I don't go very often. I mean, there's a lot of very nice people, like in my section here, 102, we've got a nice, uh, you know, we've got a few people that have been s struggling with it for the six years they've been in that building. But there's a lot of very, like, uh, the one guy who used to sit behind me, maybe he died or something. Very sour, nasty old guy, just, oh, man. And every time you turn around, he, the guy with the thumbs, you know, Jack, the guy with the hands? Right. This is the guy with the thumbs. He's got these kind of strange stuff. He's got, like, gnarled up hands. Well, that, that's bad to say. I mean, I feel sorry for him, don't I? No. No, it's sad. Isn't it sad? No. Oh. But he's just nasty, you know? You know what I'm talking about. No, I know. You see it everywhere in South Florida. You go to the store, the supermarket. Ah! You know, they're just, there's an endless supply. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Just like in Montreal with an endless supply of really, really strange, ugly people. Even in a hotel. Staying in a fine hotel right downtown, one of the best in the city. And you, you'd think, well, a lot of these people are tourists. They're coming from someplace else, right? Ugly. I think. Oh. Ugly. <laughs> strange. 1242 at 560 WQMA. If you want to give your home a new style this holiday season by replacing that tired old carpeting, let me tell you right now about a great place. Laminates are us. This is the easy, low-maintenance alternative to natural wood flooring, which costs you an arm and four legs. Laminates are us is the best place to find laminated wood flooring from the top names in a business. They got them all, Perador, Pergo, Wilson Art, Unifloor, Quickstep, and all of Laminates are us flooring is installed by Pergo certified installers who really know their crap. Here's another good reason to call Laminates are us. Their prices, like I always tell you, will floor you. Right now, you can get their holiday special for just 1495 bucks. Just 1495 gets you up to 295 square feet of beautiful laminate wood flooring. It is positively unbelievable. And Laminates or Us will match any legitimate written offer, too. For a free in-home estimate, call Laminates or Us toll-free at 1-877-777-3336. Nothing could be simpler. They give you free carpet disposal, free furniture moving, a 25-year warranty. So this holiday season, give your home a new style with beautiful laminate wood flooring. Call Laminates or Us today, toll-free, and tell them that Cranky Old Neil told you to call 1-877-777-3336. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAQAM. Now, nobody voted for Ricky Williams on our first poll today. Shame on you, man. I'll see the hair. And Mo ain't too happy about it. It's a terrorist warning. All right. That neither you nor Eric get around too much, probably because of financial uh, necessity. Uh -huh. But Reading, Pennsylvania. Now, which of you bubbleheads is responsible for the spelling of Reading, Pennsylvania? Probably me. I don't know. Let me uh... see. Otis Reading. I'd say, all right. He's got R E D D I N G. So that would be me. R E A D I N G. Reading. 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 So Never heard of Reading, Pennsylvania before. Never been there. Never heard of it. No. Never heard of it. No. Never heard of Reading, Pennsylvania? Oh, my God. I've never, wow. I've never heard what of it and seen little it spelled spick. at the same time. Man. R-E-A. Sorry about that, Eric. We're dealing with the third of a deck, kind of like the Reagans. 
Yeah, they're doing a whole thing here on the uh, on uh, CNN. <laughs> no, it's K N U C K L E H E A D. Tampa 40, the ugliest people in the world. Tampa, Montreal 29. Oh, Tampa's pulling away. You want to know why? Why? For far more of our audience have been to Tampa than Montreal. There you go. See, then take a rocket scientist to figure that out. And, and I have no uh, no dispute with that. You remember that week that we uh, spent in Tampa, like doing time mm-hmm. in Alcatraz? Mm-hmm. Wow. Woo! It's an orange head thing. It's a redneck thing. It's an inbred thing. It's like that kid we were reading about uh, from Deliverance. Banjo boy. Banjo boy. Same thing. Tampa 40, Montreal 29, Paris 20. The frog factor is heavy. Cleveland 14. Hollywood, Florida 7. Frog factor again. Nashville 6, Asheville, uh, North Carolina 4, and Reading, PA, no matter how you spell it, has got one. It had to be her. It had to be you, honey. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless Line. WQAM. Yeah, do you know um, what's the schedule for tonight, if there's a game on or who's on? The schedule for tonight? Yeah. The schedule of what? Of the radio show, who's on. I have no idea why. Are you worried about it? Yeah. You're going to miss some games? No, I just wanted to know if the Big O was on. The Big O is not on. Aren't you, know, you happy about that? Yeah, I'm unhappy. You're unhappy about it? Yeah. Well, if you want a game, go play with yourself, okay? Five six seven oh five sixty. Pound 560, he'll lose, on the AT&T and Verizon Wireless line. Interesting you mentioned that, though, because I, he must be paying very close attention. I haven't mentioned the schedule once today, have I? That was probably Clarence's boyfriend calling him. Probably trying to subliminal way get me to read the schedule. Okay, here it is. Mad Dog at two. The Humper at Chula's four to seven this afternoon. The Hummer. You got the Ricky Williams show at the Cleveland's uh, Cleveland seven o'clock. That should keep that punk happy. Keep him uh, real uptight and out of sight. Hurricane Hotline at Tony Roma's eight to ten with the unctuous Joe Zagaki. Joe Zagaki sucks. Okay. Eddie K at ten and Joe and Mark overnight. Any other questions? No. Good. That's it. No. No games. Give me the ball, give me the ball. No games, no hockey games even. The Panthers come home against Ottawa Wednesday against the staggering Ottawa Senators. Uh, any interest in the Panther game? No. How about if we give some tickets away? What do you say? No. Ooh. 5670560, pound five. And speaking of giving something away, you know, is Miguel there today or is he like on another busman's holiday? What's the deal there? I ain't seen him. Yeah, see? This, this best of, this is the last time I'm doing it. You've said that before. No, it's the last time I'm doing it. I mean, to expend this much energy and get such a small return, I mean, uh, for Abandoned Pet Rescue, our best deal, uh, we stopped doing it last year because of lack of interest, inside and outside. And then there are those who say, yeah, but you used to go to those appearances. No, the deal is we used to do a million van hits. And the van hits were strictly and specifically for the best in your merchandise. Not as kind of like an afterthought because Miguel is being required, being coerced to go to please some sponsor somewhere who's been promised some song and a dance uh, van hit. So we take the QM van out now, and he goes to like, Moishi's uh, Plumbing uh, in uh, Dania, you know. And, oh, gee, we only raised $300. Well, who the hell's going to go to Moishi's Plumbing anyway, especially in here when we can't raise money for charity to begin with? You were telling me before about the Power 96 things that they do at a certain place that I don't want to mention because you need the cash. But uh, forget about it. You know, it, it's difficult. But now, this year, it's like, uh, well, uh, we can't be bothered with this and we can't be bothered with that. And the station doesn't want to lift a finger to do anything. I had to embarrass them the week that I was there. I embarrassed all of my close personal friends there to write in checks so they could hand me the check personal, see? You weren't mm-hmm. there that week. You'd have puked to see it. How many weeks have I been begging and pleading those people, you know, please help us out. We really need your help for uh, the charity cause this year. Things are going slow. How many weeks? About 30, man. At least. And I, when I was there, then they're all coming around, my good friends, and they want to stick it right in my hand. And believe me, there ain't nobody there. I want to have them stick it in my hand. Well, 5670560. Oh, Pound, so we don't have a number is the point I'm trying to make. We have no idea whether we got nope. 41,000, 102 million. Uh, we have no idea. No. Nope. See, see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's an embarrassment. So the bottom line when you're at QAM, do the, here's a little lesson for you, Josh. The bottom line is do the absolute minimum. In other words, just show up, do the best you can while you're out there, and then that's it. Go home and forget about it. Put the check in the bank. That, that's it. He's got that down. Good. Don't do anything extra. 
Don't try, don't uh, go out of your way to try to go a little bit above and beyond, because the answer right. is, no. Well, what, just whatever not, you do, don't it, care. It's not the Beasley effing way. So we try to raise money for a really good charity, and it doesn't make any difference what the charity is. See, for a while there we were thinking, oh, well, it's, you know, Planned Parenthood's a little controversial, or the cover of the CD was too controversial. I mean, this year's uh, CD ain't controversial. It's me <laughs> farting on Mo Howard David's grave. That alone should raise a million dollars, you know? There's a lot of people out there who would pay big money to go and fart on his grave. In fact, I think the best idea is if he would just croak already, and then we could charge right at the grave, at the tombstone. What do you say? Okay. Let's work on that. For right, right around a Chinooka time. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon line. WQAM. Jumbo. WQAM. Hello. I I want to ask Neil a question. About what? About Smallville. No chance. You still watching that? No, I was just not me. I, I I got burned out on it. You know, it's just I don't know. You know, he still looks good, and she still looks good, and uh, that's fine, so they look good. Moves too right? slow. It, it, it's very slow, and nothing really ever happens, and uh, and it, it, it's so corny, you know. It's, it's kind of like um, Little House on the Prairie. Stuff happened on there, man. Bitches got burnt up. Babies. Oh, they did? Yeah. Well, I never watched it, but kind of like what I assumed it was like. You mean no. I missed something good? Yeah, as a matter of fact, if, uh, if you're into the soap opera drama kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, just get around paws closed, but uh, no, it's Smallville. I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just not into it no more. I'm just, uh, it's, it's just boring to me, and it just doesn't hold my attention. Just nothing ever happens, like nothing. Same old crap, and, and they're always meeting at the soda shop, you know. And Lana's always bitch, getting bitched out by what's her name, the other one, and uh, and Clark oh. is uh, gonna do it, and he's thinking about doing it, and then the wrong color ring comes up on his finger, and oh, I'm not gonna do it after all. And Ma and Pa kettle there, you know. <laughs> it's just uh, too hokey for me, you know. And I don't have that obsession with hokey no more. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T and Verizon wireless line. WQAM, hello. Yeah, hi Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, ugly people. The thing is, it's four out of five people are generally ugly. I mean, you know, only kind of hook up with somebody with alcohol or drugs. Yeah. But the ugliest people are always in Walmart, from Phoenix to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> so you just wait on line one day. Yeah. Wait online and just start looking around, and it's just mm -hmm. unbelievable the sights that go into these gigantic new super Walmarts. And Where they bring in they bring in busloads from the trailer parks. I, I don't know. They're wearing house dresses and these stretchy pants that nobody on earth on earth should be wearing, and the sights. Well, it, it'll make you sick. <laughs> okay, I'm standing out of Walmart. You convinced me. Thanks, Pally. Here's a fact that says. Did you happen to see 60 Minutes last night? No. No, I did not. It says, wow. I think it was the opening piece. Ed Bradley was championing this bitch that claimed responsibility for changing a slum in East Virginia into a respectable community across the street. He made her into a hero, and all she did was hold her hand out and shout, slavery, and the government, meaning you and I, wound up paying out $4 million for modern housing for these deadbeats. To top it off, she demanded porches be designed into the house plans <clears throat> because porches are the gathering place for these people going back to slave days. It says, I make 120 grand. I find it hard to buy a nice home. You and I brought, bought these deadbeats homes for nothing. They don't work. They don't want to work. Mark my words, if Ed Bradley goes back in two years, the new homes will be just like the slum. They replaced and we paid for it. And you know what? This fact is correct. This fact is absolutely correct. Porches, huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to get sucked into that. I know exactly where you're going. Not me. I'm not monkeying around with that stuff. Mm -mm. Just walk away. <laughs> oh, believe me. I have one suggestion for you. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Yeah, good thinking. 5670560. Five, oh, five, pound. Well, I always wondered where that term came from, you know what? And I guess now we found out. You ever drove through uh, South Carolina? Well, you remember out on uh, down in South Beach before the Art Deco came in, before it became artsy and fartsy and Madonna and all those uh, Goya moved in, uh, it was nothing but rocker chair heaven. Right. All the old folks, all the old Jews used to sit there on their uh, and their uh, like Sarah Goldfarb mm -hmm. on their lawn chairs, rocking chair races, rocking the night away. In what city in the world do you find the highest percentage of very very ugly people? We're not talking most. We're talking everybody. Gross. Tampa, 45. Montreal, 31. Paris, 22. Cleveland, 20. Nashville's got 10. 
Hollywood, Florida, ten. I bet you they're all frogs. And my mom. Now that was see that was bad. She's just old. She ain't ugly. She's uh, my mother. She's gross. Asheville four and Reading, Pennsylvania. We got it spelled right. Oh! It's got one out of 143. Am I doing a spot here? Cause I uh, Schmidt can the log. Oh, I don't know, Josh. Is he uh, doing a spot? Yes. I am. No, I'm not. Get out of here. That's what Josh says. A spot for what? Balance for life. Oh, balance for life. Well, thank you so much for telling me that, because I Schmidt. See, not that I want to get ahead of myself, but uh, you know, I think that whole idea of 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. sounds really good to me, yeah, don't you? Does. For like <laughs> double the pay. Right. Hey, Mo, you got some nerve not showing up this morning, Mo, but we can sympathize with you when you get to be that old when your bag keeps falling apart. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you right now, if uh, you talking about bag, what a segue again, that little black sack. Katrina, who is one of the really swell people at QAM, a really nice, uh, her mother, I don't know, her mother didn't pass it along in her jeans, I'll tell you that. You know what I mean? But somehow Katrina managed to emancipate herself from that really obnoxious, hateful mentality and become a very nice young lady. The only problem is she's been eating a little bit too much. And as a result, she needs to lose a serious amount of weight. She's lost nine pounds in two weeks on Balance for Life. Now it's your turn. No cooking, no shopping, no cleaning, no worries, no calorie counting, no carb counting, just an easy loss of weight, and delicious, too, because the food they deliver to you is fantastic. Every day, you have your little black sack at your door by 6 in the morning. You just reach outside, pick up your sack, and look at that. Three gourmet meals, and or as they say in Montreal, voila. Why do they say that? Frogs. Because they're frogs. They deliver three delicious gourmet meals and two delicious snacks right to your doorstep, and there's plenty of great fresh food to keep you happy all day long. You won't be chewing on all kinds of crap in between. In fact, uh, you'll know you're going to like it because it's the only company that lets you choose between two alternatives for each meal and snack every day that you're in the program. So you order whatever you like. So if you're sick and tired of being overweight, out of shape, lethargic, diabetic, or right on the verge of it, if you're frustrated because on TV every other hour is another show on fat people, here could be the answer you're looking for, Balance for Life. They make it simple because they do all the work for you. Call this number today, and like I said, you'll start seeing weight loss on that scale in no time at all. Call 954 954- Five six eight thirty two twenty nine nine five four five six eight thirty two twenty nine or visit them on the web at balanceforlife.com. Live and local. This this is five sixty. The radio is all yours now. Q A M. I'm Judge Roy Moore, and the next best thing to watch an Ann Coulter spank Matt Drudge is the Neil Rogers Fair and Balanced One to Two Hour. Now all us rednecks sure love incels Yes The sex just ain't as good unless it's family Because all us rednecks practice incels now I'm my only uncle and it worries me. My Aunt Esther took me with her back to her double wide. What a deal, ain't got no wheels and inside smell like something died. She kissed my cheek and winked her eye and said, we're all alone in the house. But I got sick when she gave me a kiss Chewing tobacco in her mouth All us rednecks sure love incest Cause sex just ain't as good unless it's family Alright Because all us rednecks practice incest so come meet my new wife, she's my niece I just got me a farm with horses, chickens, cows and pigs A four by four that I adore, with tires that are too damn big The rear window, it has a gun rack, that's where I keep my gun Rebel flag and my wife in the back. My neck is red from too much sun. All us rednecks sure love incest. Cause sex just ain't as good unless it's family. Because all us rednecks practice incest. 
sister is the one over there with the dirty knees. At reunions, it's hard to choose who's got the nicest tooth. And I don't like the way my daddy has been watching me. 104 at 560 WQM. Y'all come back now. Here, 156 votes on our poll. In what city in the world will you find the highest percentage of really grotesque, nasty, ugly people? Tampa, 47. Montreal, 33. Paris, 22. Cleveland, 20. Nashville's got, uh, let's see, Hollywood just got another one. Hollywood's got 12. Uh, Asheville, 11. And Nashville, 11. And Asheville. And Reading, PA's got three out of 161 votes. That's surprising, isn't it? A couple other people went into Reading. Yeah. Well, you ought to start reading about Reading. I'll take the Reading Railroad up there. This is from Alan Key's website. Thank you so much, one of our astute listeners out there in the audience. You know, <coughs> Alan Key's, that uh, right-wing Schwarzer? Yes. Who ran for president, by the way. How many votes did he get? About 30, man. Paba. P-A-B-A-A-H. The you know what Paba means. stands for? Suntan lotion stuff, yeah. Patriotic Americans boycotting anti-American Hollywood. Paba, it's kind of like the Puba. Paba petition takes aim at Michael Moore Film Project. Miramax and theater owners facing boycott. Alan Keyes has this on his flaming uh, website. Syracuse, New York, what an awful place. Patriotic Americans boycotting anti-American Hollywood and conservativepetitions.com have joined efforts to protest the development and release of Fahrenheit 9-11, the latest film project directed by controversial director Michael Moore. It is our intention to petition Miramax Studios to terminate their relationship with this project or face a possible boycott. Theater chains will also be petitioned in order to make them aware of the anti-American nature of this film from the petition. See, it wasn't good enough they got the Reagan thing shammed off to Showtime where nobody saw it. That wasn't good enough. Also, they, uh, you know how when you go on uh, certain right-wing websites, then you start getting these pop-up ads for like, if you support Rush, click here, you know. And now there's there's one about if you support Mel Gibson. Huh? Because of that Jesus movie, his, you know? Oh, yeah. Right. Jesus Christ. Right. Anyway, dedicated to bringing down the Bush presidency, anti-American director Michael Moore is making a treasonous documentary All right. to be released before next year's election. His Fahrenheit 9-11 will be a political assassination piece which uses lies, exaggerations, twisted facts, and unsubstantiated reports in an attempt to discredit President George W. Bush. How do they It'll know that? It will also be a... What? How do they know that? They don't. They just made it up. It'll also be a vile insult to the memories of the victims of 9-11, but that doesn't matter to Moore. To vent his personal wrath and bring the administration down as promised, Moore actually is willing to endanger all of us by inflaming our enemies in a crazed attempt to plant seeds of doubt among Americans and our nation's allies. Thank God the president didn't inflame uh, our enemies by doing an Iraq attack. Thank God he didn't do something crazy like that. It says, don't let this treason reach the silver screen. Sign this petition no. demanding Miramax stop its funding of Moore's extremely irresponsible film and in doing so alert distributors and theater chains not to participate in this blatant anti-America effort. Now, this, this is, like you, like you said, how do they know that? It hasn't even been written right. yet. He's still developing it. Monday but they just know because it's Michael Moore, it's going to be bad, and it's going to be full of lies and distortions, and it's going to be anti-American, and it's going to be very anti-Bush, and uh, et cetera, and so on. To which we say, All right. bring it on. Can't see it soon enough. Well, there's the Cincinnati controversy again with that 400-pound guy that they uh, offed. Jones, the man he wow. says, police had to struggle with when they yeah. arrived. Webster's harshest reaction is directed at department leaders and the way the officers themselves were treated. The officers were also taken down to CIS, and they were treated as criminals. The officers are treated as criminals. Well, this guy's from the Fraternal Order of Police. In that video, what did these officers do wrong? And until we find out the, the total incident, it's hard to pass any hard and fast judgment. Black United Front Leader Reverend Damon Lynch stopped at the White Castle parking lot to see the scene for himself Sunday night. He's seen these pictures, but quietly says... It's important to know what happened before the tape actually starts. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, boy. Well, what's there to say? You know, it's a police state, so why shouldn't they be uh, beating the crap out of people and killing a few every now and then, right? Right. Anyway, Steve says, hey, Neil, used to listen to your show when I lived in South Florida. Enjoy your humor. I now live in Nashville. I'm so sorry, Steve. To get out of South America, I mean Florida, he says. 
I disagree with your view on the stereotypical, stereotypical Nashvilleian. Having lived in South Florida for 43 years, I agree there are many beautiful people in Miami. But having lived here in Nashville for the past 15 months, I have to say there's a lot of gorgeous people here. Well, they must have just moved there, Steve. It says, I've been to Tampa and voted for that city on your poll. Have a great day. I love listening to your show. Thanks a lot, Steve. And it says, P.S. Go Titans. Are you a Titan fan? Huh? How about the uh, Predators? Got to be something to like in Nashville. You ever been to Nashville? No, not me. Don't. The other end of the state there, by the mountains. Memphis? No, no cities, just the mountains. Oh, just in the mountains, Elizabeth just in the said, woods. Right. Just up in the woods, like uh, right. that family there in uh, in Aintree. By design. Aintree? I go to where the city ain't. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, no dentist's going to make any money in that movie. Because <laughs> they don't use any. What about wow. to pull teeth? Sure like them teeth, man. Aintree? Just the way he says it, just kind of <laughs> like, you got to be there. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T. If you join us late, here's a little piece of advice: Don't go to Montreal unless you want to see a lot of ugly people. In fact, you know what would be great? Well, no, they had, other than the service people, you know, like the people to wait on you in the restaurants. If they just took everybody out, it'd be a lot less crowded. There you go. Then you could roller skate down that. Uh, just keep the cab drivers to drive it from the airport. And get there like in probably fifteen minutes. And they got like a nice little dinky airport. What the hell is it called? It's called um, nice Dorval. Dinky. Well, they have an international airport, which I don't know where the hell that is, but they have a smaller airport for, like, domestic flights. Dorval Airport. And it's clean, and it's nice, and it's very small. It's about the size of your house. I I'm serious. It's like a yeah, like, yeah. Re re reminds me of the small airport in Berlin called Tegel Airport. And the plane the plane lands on a runway, and you start taxiing up, and you wonder, okay, where's the terminal? Because it looks like a little post office. Huh. And then you realize there's, like, three or four gates, and then that's it. And you pull up, and somebody says, V Gates, and then you realize you better turn around and go back. Now, see, that's a good thing in Germany, man. Now, that's a place you need to know, to go to. Then you'd, pre then you'd understand what the government in the U.S. is becoming, number one. And number two, then you'd see some really uh, hot-looking people. And anybody over the age of 40, you, you see they got they have that little arthritic problem where their arm is just stuck in that 45-degree <laughs> angle upright position. Yeah. Maybe no, it's just it, it's nothing to do with fascism. It's just I think it's arthritis, you know. Because their, their arm is always, they're just goose-stepping along, and their arm is always like up in the air like that. Still plenty of Nazis in Germany, baby. Make no mistake about it. They're just saying hi. Heil. Sig? Yeah. Hi, Sig. There used to be a guy on Larry King's show 100 years ago. Hank knows him. Sig Shy. He was like a gambling degenerate, kind of like our people. He's got to be dead by now. But anyway, I was on a panel on Larry King one night when I was at KET, and Sig Shy was on there. So, in other words, if he was in uh, on the Kudam in Berlin, eh, Sig, Heil. That's right. See, that's all they would be saying, would be Sig, hi. But right away, you start with them anti-German feelings again. Yeah. Sig Shy. Boy, this Larry King thing, man. If you if you could have just seen some of that show. No. His 70th anniversary. I am so shocked. I'm so surprised. It was so fake, man. It was you wanted to cry. And I couldn't shut the thing off. Mike Wallace was sitting there going into a coma in a chair. And then they brought uh, uh, Sharon Stone on there, and she's like uh, snapping his suspenders, you know. And oh God, and he's got his little kids. He's 70 years old. This old cocker for crying out loud. And then they bring out his 25-year-old uh, wife, whatever she is. Nice going there, Larry. You old fart. Can you imagine doing it with Larry? King? Ah, wait, what are, you, what are you trying to do to me? Oh, oh my God! I'm bring that up. Yeah. Supposed to show you, baby. The big bucks when you got the really big bucks. You call that a penis? No, don't make any difference no more. 113 at 560 w WQM. Everybody and their brother's on a low-carb diet now. In fact, finally, now that Dr. Atkins is dead, he's getting the respect he deserved when he was alive. More and more of the so-called experts are saying, you know what? That damn thing works. It's the refined carbohydrates that kill you. The only problem in staying on a low-carb diet is selection and getting some variety. Because I don't care how much you like steak and cheese and uh, shrimp or whatever or lobster. You can only eat it so many times a day in a week. <clears throat> so if you want something to satisfy your sweet tooth, if you want something to keep you on a straight and narrow path that will give you the variety you're looking for, here's a great store for you. Delights of West Boca. That's right. I've been talking about these folks for a coon's age. They've got over a 1,000 low-carb products in this one great store, all dedicated to you and your dietary needs. they got breads and bagels and cheesecakes, muffins, brownies, chocolates, pasta, sauces, chips and dips, soups, ketchups, that delicious world-famous Carbolite ice cream, champion light drinks in five delicious flavors, walnut brownies by controlled carb, blitz-stoked mints in three flavors, uh, simply low-carb bread with stevia. 
They've got Lanuba jams and seven gourmet flavors to jam on it. Carb Slim Bites make a great snack and have no <laughs> laxative effect, thank the Lord. And they've got Slim Carb Fudgies, Fudge Brownies for all the brownie hounds out there, or Chocolate Raspberry Cookies. You know what I really do like? I give up. Chocolate and raspberry. Like yeah. ice cream? Yeah. You don't like that flavor where they like raspberry. combine the two? Mm -mm -mm. I think maybe I'll have to go back to, uh, what's it, to uh, Montreal, Montreal and see if they have that. Anyway, don't forget, you can try anything in the store at Delights every day before you buy it, and they're open every day, seven days a week from 10 to 10. You'll find Delights on the northeast corner of Glades and 441, next to Boston Market in Boca, but thankfully very, very far from Moe's old folks' home. You can call them toll-free at 1-877-LOW-CARB, that's L-O-W-C-A-R-B, or on the web, find them at lowcarb.com. Don't forget all you low-carb dieters out there, this is the place you're going to love. Delights of West Boca, your official Atkins Retail Center. <laughs> Sports Radio 560, QAM. It's me favorita. It's the day, blood. It's the day, WQAM. Oh, You've seen him on Channel 7 News. First, as a two-bit reporter. Now, as a two-bit anchor that wears more makeup than Tammy Faye Baker and Mary Kay combined, Rick Sanchez sings. Hear the dulcet tones of the man who brought you Crime Check, Rick Sanchez. Like a garage, Rick Sanchez. Rick Sanchez sings. Don't miss Rick Sanchez in his pasty face tour over Hialeah. It's one show you won't want to miss steak for a good one. Rick Sanchez, he loves his audience. I accept you as a precious gift from God. Oh, God. 119, I hate you, Rick. 119 at 560 WQM. I'll tell you one of the many reasons why that liberal radio network is never going to work. Why? Because liberals, unlike right-wingers, uh, generally have a life. They have other interests. Right. They aren't one-dimensional assholes uh -huh. who sit around wanting to hear the parrot repeating the same thing over and over and over again. It's just, it's just not in our nature. Right. But the right-wingers, the Limbaugh, the ditto heads, these are idiots who sit around searching the dial for the next voice. It's the Schmidtmeister, it's it's G. Gordon Liddy, it's Ollie North, it's uh, whoever the hell it is repeating the same crap over and over and over again. You know, and, and the rest of the public doesn't give a crap about that. I just mentioned that in passing. It, it's never going to fly. I mean, I hope they get it on, even if it changes a few votes. But it uh, ain't going to make a big impact. And Plus, they're talking about Al Franken, and as you saw over the weekend, Al Franken... You know, what he writes is very funny and very effective, but he's, uh, you know, weak. Uh, weak, exactly. They want to put Michael Moore on there every day. Then you got somebody who's not weak, somebody who's strong, somebody who's got a big mouth and is not afraid to say it and is articulate and doesn't hold anything back. Then you got it. Here's a fact that says, without a doubt, the ugliest people in the world live in Ocala, Florida. I witnessed this myself this weekend. I saw most of them at the Super Walmart. Oh, oh boy, stay away from Walmart. That's just one more of thousands of reasons to stay the hell away from Walmart. Yeah. Besides the other obvious ones that you've talked about a million times. Tampa 52, the ugliest people in the world you'll find in Tampa, Florida. Out of 190 votes. Montreal 37. Cleveland 28. Paris 26. Hollywood, Florida is doing well. 19. <coughs> They're going to be filming the next 10 chapters of The Frog Factor in Hollywood Beach. Asheville 12, Nashville 12, and Reading, PA 4. See, you learned something already today about Reading, Pennsylvania. Reading? No, not yet. WQAM. Oh, hi, Deb. What did he just say? I'm not sure. Oh, I think he said, oh, hello, something like that. WQAM, hello. Yeah, hello? Yes, sir. Who's this? Who's this? Robert. Robert? 
Greeper? Mm-hmm. What are you eating, Robert? Butts. Butts? Butts. <laughs> butts? You're eating butts. See more butts? Oh, Get out of here, Robert. You're an idiot. That was Robert Greeper cranking a show. Told you he's an asshole, didn't I? How come a guy with a cloud of Joe Costello hasn't been able to get Robert Greeper fired yet? I don't understand. He sure is hell working hard on it. Now, why do I do line nine? I just have this. Uh, I No, I have a, It's the curiosity in me. Here's line nine. QAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how's it hanging? Okay, where are you calling from? I'm calling from way up in West Palm. I'll be damned. Anyway, listen, I had a radio action yesterday morning. I was listening to a Sunday morning sports showdown, and uh, they said that Joe Zagaki and Howard were blessed to have this, this guy, Gurgly, uh, they're the best announcers in the country. Joe Zagaki. <laughs> And Howard Lowe David. Right. Anyway, Joe Zagaki sucks, okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, we are blessed, baby. I'll tell you that. The Dolphins' big win on Thanksgiving Day over the uh, Dallas Cowboys, who are highly overrated, obviously. And the Hurricanes getting by another little girls team that was very, very overrated, Pittsburgh, uh, on Saturday. So aren't we blessed this week? Oh, yeah. Now, are we going to be cursed next week if the Patriots beat the Bejesus out of the Dolphins in New England on Sunday? Won't be, uh, we be... No. No, we, I'll be blessed. Boy, you talk about fickle, man. From week to week, from game to game, it's uh, this one is great, this one sucks, uh, this team is great, this team sucks, wants that's got to go, wants that is great. It, it, it's hysterically funny when you're on the outside looking in when you don't have a vested interest because you're not a fan of those teams in the first place. It, it's, it's most amusing. And I'm not saying that it's exclusive with South Florida. I mean, there, there's some of that with everybody. Just like in Toronto, uh, uh, ten days ago, hey, Pat Quinn's got to go. Everybody's calling for him to get fired. Bring in Mike Keenan. Now the Leafs win five in a row. He's the greatest thing since uh, Halava at Rubens Deli in Montreal. Eh? I didn't have one thing. I did not have was their smoked meat. Well, why not? Because I've heard that it sucks. I see. Oh. I'm not that big on smoked anything, you know. Smoked. Oh, uh, I like smoked, real smoked. Do you? See, like smoked you turkey. Get in the store, right? It's got that kind of like burnt taste to it. You no, know what I mean? Because you, what you're getting is uh, liquid smoke, which is fake, and it doesn't taste anything like real smoke. The real smoking process. I see. Here's. I was born and raised in Hollywood, so my hard-earned frogophobia has always prevented me from going there. I've been elsewhere in Canada, however. Toronto, as you say, is great. Reminds me of a meld of the best things about New York and Chicago. It's cosmopolitan, diverse, and international like New York, but clean and orderly like Chicago. Not to mention the similarity of appearance right on one of the Great Lakes. Absolutely correct. If you get a chance, you should check out Vancouver, another progressive international city. It is set in beautiful geographical location like San Francisco and Seattle, to which it bears some resemblance. British Columbia is a pretty weed-friendly area as well, if that matters to anyone you know. I don't know anybody who smokes no weed. Like most of Canada, it's, been be it's best seen in the spring or summer. My suggestion, and now it's funny that they mention this because I thought of this this morning, but there's some hot looking people in Hialeah. It, it says, it My suggestion for the ugliest city populace, Hialeah, brown trash, rice and beans, fat ass, no speaking English, Jesus on a black velvet canvas, loving women with mustaches, and guys who are deeply closeted maticones. <laughs> well, let's put it on there for fun, Hialeah. Okay? Now I'm going to agree with him. If you saw good looking people in Hialeah, then uh, you must know where. Well, I used to live next to Miami Lakes High, but that's a long time ago. And probably okay. when those people grew up, they all moved out real fast. Okay. I did. I used to live right next to Miami Lakes High many, many years ago. I would say 1977. That's 26 years ago. Those people are all old and nasty looking now. Whatever. Oh, you're right, because Hialeah is very, especially like around a racetrack. Mm -hmm. Now that you mention it, really South ugly. American now. That's where the sweatshop workers live. Oh, does Kathy Lee hang out there too? <laughs> five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T Verizon wireless line. We got the Mad Dog at two. He'll be on a euphoric high. He'll be hopping right on the old Jeff high today because of the uh, Dolphin big win on Thanksgiving Day. Then you got the Humper at four, who's on a food high. <laughs> huh? After having uh, heavy a heavy of uh, stuff in his face, the Humper. And then you got that Ricky Williams show at the Clevelander. Hey, Ricky, give me the ball again. Get a haircut, Ricky, okay? They keep tackling it about... How many times does he have to get tackled by the hair to realize he's got to get a haircut? How many times? About 30, man. Hurricane Hotline with the unctuous Joe Zagaki and Don Bailey Jr. And is Clarence on that? Now, did you give Clarence that thing I faxed you this morning? I gave it to Duff. Oh, give it, that's it. Give it to Duff. Clarence has given it to Duff a lot. That's why he's got that title. 54 Top. votes for Tampa as the ugliest city in the world. And you'll notice, by the way, 
other than Paris and Montreal, I'm looking at this list. Every city is an American city. See what I mean? Well, they're going to suggest places they've been. That's what I'm talking about. It's a little on the parochial side. Get on a plane. Go somewhere, okay, while, right. uh, while, we, while we still can. 27 after 1 at 560 WQM. Shelley Bloom's Fashion Clothing has been around a long time, serving the men in South Florida, 40 years in the same great location at 2650 Northwest 5th Avenue in the Miami Fashion District. At Shelley Bloom's, you'll find fine men's clothing. They got it all. They got suits, sport coats, slacks, dress and sport shirts, ties, and one of the largest selection of great designer shoes anywhere in town. Shelley's got Italian slacks, Super 120s in 15 colors for just 60 bucks. Giorgio Armani suits that sell from 1395 to 1595 are just 795 bucks when you do the smart thing and buy them at Shelley Bloom's Fashion Clothiers. Shelley even offers a fantastic selection of Italian suits starting at just 225 bucks each. Service, selection, and price. That's what's kept Shelley Bloom going for the past 40 years plus, and he guarantees you that's never going to change. The selection is unbeatable, alterations always free, and with thousands and thousands of suits in stock up to size 70, you're sure to find what you need. <coughs> up to size 70, fat boy. So stop overspending at the malls and make the trip to Shelley Blooms in the heart of the Fashion District. They're open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 a.m. till 6 p.m. If you have questions, you want to compare price, just give Shelley a call, 305-573-5890. That's 305-573-5890. It's like a landmark in Florida. Shelley Blooms Fashion Clothiers. And no matter where you are, believe me, it's worth the trip. Live and local. This is Sports Radio 560. QAM. Sick Michael Jackson is backing up traffic. Cops looking for anything pornographic. Pictures and videos packed in boxes. They even took the big wig from the whiz. Neverland Ranch smells like monkeys and llamas. Little boys wearing those trapdoor pajamas. Michael would secretly watch when they pee. Then haul them up to that damn thinking tree. Teddy bears wearing tricolored vibrators. Under real panties packed in the dumb waiters. Licorice gumdrops and Superman rings. Those are a few of his sick, freaky things. Michael Jacko, he's a wacko. He's going to jail. Will this wrong be righted? Will he be indicted? Put his Ferris wheel no. on sale. Never going to happen. I'm telling you that right now. Not a chance in a million. But when the hell does the trial start already, huh? I know. Let's see. I think I think I said uh, two weeks from today. It's the 15th that he's going to be uh, formally arraigned. Okay. Right? And they're going to file charges. And they're going to spell it out. Defile charges. But at any rate, and then, uh, oh, who the hell knows? Maybe that will carry us through most of the election year so the public can keep their minds off important things like getting Bush out of the White House and saving democracy. But never, nevertheless, it be a good distraction. Rick Sanchez was advertising, it says here on the facts, uh, his show, a 15-second ad as an Oprah-type show, asking people to tune into specific themes. But today, it says, I saw him asking to watch the show. Please watch. It's all about South Florida. I want you to join our show. Desperation is coming out, it says. When in doubt, the desperation comes out. Squirt, squirt. You're going to be off the air pretty soon, Ricky Ticky, okay? I was, I was just thinking when I read the facts, why would anybody in their right mind, what has he got to say? He's a newsreader. Right. He's a newsreader who's an emotional professional Cuban who got all carried away with the Elyon thing and was calling the people on the cell phone to turn around and go back and don't waste your time going to Sister Jean's house and all of that crap. Extraordinarily unprofessional, hyperventilating, uh, hysterical, squatting over the map. Well, what has he got to say that anybody wants there? And obviously the answer is nothing. Zippo. zippity doo Even the Julios don't want to watch him, I'm sure. No. You're small potatoes, Rick, okay? You're at the end of the line. You and Michelle Gillen. Maybe they can elope. Ooh. Here's somebody for today's poll says, I would like, and it's a good thing they warned me because I was thinking about checking this place out. I would like to, like to nominate Barcelona Spain. Barcelona. It says, the only way to tell the women from the men is by who has the larger breasts. Most of the women have more facial hair than the men. I'm talking mustaches, sideburns, and chin hair. Look for the Adam's apple if you get desperate for companionship <laughs> in Barcelona. Well, let's put Barcelona on the list. Okay. Must be awfully different from Madrid, because I was in Madrid a few years ago. Man, oh, man, oh, man, a show. Well, they did one of those, uh, Ooh, you wee, man, those wild on shows. On what show? The Wild on This, Wild on That. The, the hard on this and hard on that. So they did Wild on Barcelona, and they must have known where to look. 
because uh, they found them. Yeah. I don't believe this fax. I'm going to Barcelona just to see for myself. When in doubt, I'm going to check it out. Oh, and you know something? Maybe the president should have done that. The, the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency has acknowledged it lacked specific information about alleged Iraqi weapons of mass destruction when it compiled an intelligence estimate last year that served to justify the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. But it said that... What? It said that this and other uncertainties surrounding the case have been fully presented to President George W. Bush and other U.S. policymakers in the October 2002 National Intelligence Estimate, a document often referred to by members of the Bush administration as a basis of their claim that Iraq had an arsenal of weapons of mass destruction. U.S. Secretary of State Powell told the U.N. Security Council last February that Saddam Hussein and his regime were concealing their efforts to produce more weapons of mass destruction, that their weapons programs are a real and present danger to the region and the world. However... <clears throat> An explanation issued over the weekend by veteran CIA analyst Stuart Cohen, who was in charge of putting together the 2002 intelligence estimate and currently serves as vice chairman of the National Intelligence Council, made clear the case against Iraq as presented by the CIA behind closed doors was much less clear-cut and more nuanced. Any reader would only have had to read as far as the second paragraph of the key judgments to know that, as we said, we lacked specific information on as many key aspects of Iraq's WMD program, Cohen wrote an article posted on the agency's website. So in other words, I guess they didn't read the second paragraph. They read the first paragraph and they said, oh, that sounds pretty good, let's say that. And he said, okay, let's do it. And now we're in that quagmire over there and there's innocent people dying every single day and uh, we still don't have any elections and we still are talking about, well, we don't know, is it going to be a year, is it going to be two years, and uh, it just goes on. We're going to stay the, the course. On. We're going to stay the course if it takes forever. No matter how many people have to die, no matter how many of your kids have to go over there and have their lives uh, taken away from them, it's just uh, one of them things. And then I love the way he keeps saying, we're going to win this fight against terrorism. Yeah. It has absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. Nothing. And the average schmuck out there uh, buys it. Oh, yeah. Remember 9-11? We can't just roll over and play dead. And just like Howard Dean said last week in that debate, he said, I'm not pissed off because he is fighting the war on terrorism. I'm pissed off because he's not. That's the problem. How come I'm getting all whipped up about this crap again? I don't know, but it's good. No, it's not. I'll get it's back to it's pointless. Thing. These people don't care. All they care about is what are they going to get under the Hanukkah bush and under the Christmas tree. That's all they care about because they're materialistic like me. They want things. I want things. I want things. <laughs> yeah, I know you want things. Wreck them. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. WQAM. Oh, hi, Debbie. I want to cut my thingy off. WQAM. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, in and out of the car all day, but I want to nominate the ugliest men in the world is Russian men. Russian men? Beautiful women. Ugliest men in the world. Okay, whatever you say, pal. First of all, Russia's not a city, and number two, he's definitely wrong. I guess he's never not a hockey fan like almost everybody else in South Florida. He never saw the Russian uh, hockey players, a lot of them. Don't put that on there. Don't put that on there, Eric. What? Don't put the city of Russia on there? Don't put the city of Russia on there, the city of the former Soviet Union. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T. Yeah, we're dealing with a very parochial crowd, I think, I'm afraid. Or... or <laughs> Or, on the other hand, maybe those people who really do get around a lot, maybe they're uh, visiting somewhere right now. Maybe yeah, they're in maybe Amsterdam. They're around. Maybe they're in Prague. Maybe they're in uh, Budapest. Ocala. Roma. Maybe they're up in uh, Ocala or like in Lakeland ought to be really good this time of the year. WQAM. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, did, Mo didn't get fired, did he? Yeah. He did? Cause he was yeah, on, he's done. He, he was in Minnesota yesterday. Yeah, he's out. He's uh, working in uh, WCCO Minneapolis now. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, because I was. There was nothing in the paper about it. There will be. They have them. What was the holidays? You know, they're all off on a uh, busman's holiday. Did, I, I apologize. I usually tune in early. Did you talk about it before? We can't talk about it. Absolutely. Oh. Okay. Well, tune in tomorrow. He'll be on at five. Did Mo get fired? Jesus Christ! If Mo had been fired, wouldn't we be having a three or four oh, hour party today? Man. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, 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 oh. There'd be an orgies in the halls of QAM, man. You'd be able to smell the smegma from 100 miles away. There'd be so much excitement going on. Yeah. Those are the sounds you'll be hearing today that Mo gets canned. Or, even better than that, well, the day that we somberly come on and make the announcement.
You die? Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to race right over to that tombstone, drop my drawers, and <coughs> fart in his face. Wouldn't that be great? I might just <laughs> fart in my face when he's there next time I'm in town. All right. I lucked out there last time. I had it timed down to a science. I missed him five consecutive days. All right. Oh, what a great thing that was. I knew I was playing my cards right. What city in the world do you see the highest percentage of very, very ugly people? Tampa, 56. Montreal, 38. Don't go to Montreal unless you just want to eat. Stay inside. Stay in that underground thing and eat. Manja, manja, manja. Good food, man. Great food. How? Well, you got to have something, right? Right. Even ugly people got to eat. Trust me. Montreal, 38. Cleveland, 33. Paris, 32. Hollywood, Florida's got... About 30, man. Asheville, 15. Nashville, 12. Hialeah's already up to 10, and we just started. Reading, Pennsylvania, 5. Ocala, 1. And Barcelona don't have any. I don't believe that about Barcelona. No. I'm going to go check it out for myself. Like I was just saying before, don't... don't you know. And just like with me, if you think Montreal is going to be a great place and you're going to go there and have a wild time and uh, right. hot uh, straight sex and gay sex and buy sex, uh, go ahead and buy some. You know, go ahead. Also, also, isn't Barcelona the uh, the launch pad for Ibiza? Where the Ibiza? Sort of, yeah, Thief. Where all what the does hot, that mean? Hot, where all the hot people are supposed to go and uh, Ibiza? lounge in the sun. Sea. I thought Ibiza was like a place. Yeah, it's an island off the coast, and that's where they right. launch from is Barcelona. Like that, you know what that's like? That's like saying, isn't Mykonos an, off, an offshoot of Athens? I didn't say offshoot. A, la a launching pad. Yeah, like that's where they take the boat or the plane or whatever. That's where they all go to launch? <laughs> Barcelona? And they have dinner in Ibiza. I hear that they eat some of them bull parts is what I'm hearing. It's 19 till 2 <laughs> at 560. I heard it was bull. You know what I do like? Chorizo. Spanish sausage is very good. Can't Ooh. Get enough of it. Ooh, man, is that good? It's probably really bad for you, you know? No worse than That's one of the, the few things I've ever had in Amsterdam that was really edible and very, very good is chorizo. And they give you, like, small portions because it, it doesn't look like much. It looks like a little weenie. Mm -hmm. But, boy, is it, is it ever heavy, you know? Yeah. Wow. It'll, like, um, well. At any rate, let's go get some chorizo. I'm, I'm thinking about going and finding some right now. Hey, it's the most wonderful time of the year, unless, of course, you hate the crowded malls, the long register lines, the parking hassles. So make your gift giving a little bit easier this year for you and the ones you love. A gift certificate from Dial a Mattress. What a great idea. Call them now at 1-800-MATTRESS and give the gift that they'll be thanking you for year in and year out. Dial a Mattress has got gift certificates in any denomination. And a new bed for the master bedroom makes a perfect gift you'll both enjoy for years, all three of you. At Dollar Mattress, no phony promises, no bait and switch, just discount prices every day on the brand names you know and trust and love, now including Stearns and Foster Hewitt. Dollar Mattress has got the guaranteed lowest prices anywhere on Stearns and Bananas Foster. When you call Dollar Mattress 1-800-MATTRESS, you still get that unbeatable deal. You still pick the day and time for delivery any to our window seven days a week from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. I've been sleeping on a mattress from these folks for years. You should be doing the same. Believe me, your back will give you the message. Honest sales practices, fantastic service, everyday low prices, same-day delivery, and free setup and removal make it all easy to see why Dollar Mattress is ranked the best in the world in customer satisfaction. So for a service like you only dream about in the past, do the smart thing. Call the betting experts, Dollar Mattress, toll-free, 1-800-MATTRESS, 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S, or online, it's mattress.com. Happy holidays from all your good friends at Dial a Mattress. Live, live and local, we are Sports Radio 560, QAM. Of the Queen of South Florida, Neil Rogers, should be in Buckingham Palace, but we'll keep him here. Now, a phone conversation between Queen Elizabeth and the heir apparent, her son, Prince Charles. Hello. Hello, Charles. Yeah. It's, it's Mum. Oh, uh, Mum. What are you calling for again, Mum? I'm worried about you, Charles. Mum, you can't keep calling me every day. I'm, I'm, I'm very worried. You call me like ten times a day, Mum. I, I've been handed the newspaper here. The Daily Mirror? Yes. I don't read such rubbish. Well, did you happen to see the front page? I didn't see it, Mum. I don't read such rubbish, I've told you. It says, is Charles bisexual? <laughs> it says what? Is it true, Charles? What does it say, Mum? Is Charles bisexual? <laughs> What's it mean by that, Mum? It means you like the lassies and the lads. I don't like the lads, Mum. <laughs> don't cry, Mum. It's true, 
is it? Please don't cry. Mom. It's true. It's not true. I knew I should have thought something went wrong when I caught you listening to Clay Aiken. <laughs> I like him, Mom. He's a good singer. That's all there is to it. I mean, that's all there is to it. And all those Barbara Streisand movies in the collection. <laughs> I loved her in Yetel, Mom. That doesn't make me a boy. <laughs> How's Harry? Harry's fine. With us? Watching him shower right now. <laughs> Why are you crying, Mum? It's true, isn't it? What? It's true. It's not true. <laughs> You're bisexual. I am not bisexual. I don't have any sex. The woman I'm dating, Mum, looks like a horse. I mean, she doesn't give it to me at all. You know that. But is that why you go for the men? I don't go for the men, Mum. So it's not true? I'm going to be the king of England. Yes, that's what I'm worried about. Well, why are you worried, Mum? You'll be the king and the queen. <laughs> I can't continue this conversation any longer, Mum. All right. My date's here. Your date? Camilla? I'm all in early. Who, who is that? So, uh, just a friend. Is that Camilla? It's Ernie. Ernie? Who's Ernie? My friend Ernie. Who is Ernie? We play uh, football together, Mum. You don't play football? Uh, we play games together, Mum. I've got to go now, Mum. <laughs> Stop crying. Stop crying. 147 and 560 WQM. <laughs> I love that thing at the end, too. It's the frosting on the cake, eh? Here's uh, the result of the poll so far. In what city in the world did the highest percentage of very, very, very grotesque, ugly people live? 253 votes. Tampa, 58, pulling away. And they got a late start, didn't they? A little bit? Yes, a little bit. Montreal, 39. Cleveland, 38. Paris, 32. Gay Paris. Hollywood, Florida, stuck on... About 30, man. Asheville, North Carolina, 17. Hialeah, 14. Nashville, Tennessee, 13. Ocala, 6. Making a big impact already. Reading PA5 and Barcelona's got one. Oh, speaking of Pamplona. Where the Bulls yeah. run? Right. No, seriously, they had a, a trampling at came at Walmart, and we almost forgot to talk about it. That's right. Orange City, Florida, at the Walmart in Orange City, which is what, near Lakeland, I think? Yeah, did you see the uh, the footage? No. Because they had some video. Didn't see it. You want to talk about? I saw the 400-pound guy though that got murdered by the police in Cincinnati. All of the Jerry Springer contestants. Were yeah. There. So anyway, now was it a DVD player? Was that it, or a CD player? It was DVD, a DVD, wasn't it? DVD VCR bucks combo for 29 bucks. Yeah. And so all the uh, trailer trash were lined up in the wee hours of the morning. When they opened the door, the first woman online. Oh, I did see it as a matter of fact, and they trampled her ass. Right. And the rest and of her too. So the kind souls at Walmart said. Just to make it up to you, what we'll do is we'll put one on hold for it. <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna give you one, of course. No. But we'll put one on, on layaway, you know. Right. Just after we lay your ass away, we'll put one of these DVD players on layaway. <laughs> They're all hard at Walmart, man. Yeah. Woo-wee. Because they live here too. Orange City. See, I keep trying to tell you folks, man, take a look at the map. Take a look at that big drooping penis if you can without laughing. And, and just, you know, assume for the sake of argument, I'll say, oh, Dave Broward in Palm Beach, very sophisticated, very <laughs> true. <laughs> so, you know, just for the sake of argument. Yes. Just Cosmopolitan. take those counties out of the picture and look at everything else in the state of Florida, and what have you got? <laughs> like that. It's Mugwumpville. And you wonder, I mean, something as simple. Guess what they have in Montreal? Big casino. Gambler casino. Huh. Huh. And, I, and as soon as I started reading about that, you know, when you're in a hotel and it's 100 below zero and the wind is blowing outside and you're definitely not going anywhere soon, and you're reading the little booklets about tourist attractions and see this, and here's a casino, and I'm thinking, you know, South Florida, the whole state of Florida is held back by a bunch of Neanderthal mugwumps. Right. I mean, something as basic as that. you got the lottery and you got all your horses and the dog racing and pile-eye and all of this other crap. Boats. But, oh, my God, we sure as hell wouldn't want to have casinos. Don't forget the lose cruises. Right, and then we got, oh, and I see another whole bunch of people got some kind of a uh, disease over the weekend, one of those carnival cruise lines again. You see that? No. Yeah. Some kind of a uh, grotesque thing, crotch itch or some crotch rot. I think Mo must have been on there. Absolutely. God. So if you really want to have a horrible time, go on a cruise. If you want to have, see, and, and I'll bet you another good poll we should take someday is, name. tell us a place that you uh, traveled to and were pleasantly surprised. You know what I mean? 
Okay. I'm trying to think if I can come up with one myself. But a place where you expected little or nothing and it turned, I'm not saying we're going to do that anytime soon. Maybe it's a stupid idea. But you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. A place you went with minimal expectations and it turned out to be a ride. A ride. 152 at 560 QAM. My and local. This is Sports Radio 560 QAM. Troma, the meeb, the blob, okay? Homosexuals are more popular than ever before. And that's why TBS has colorized and homosexualized two movie classics for your viewing pleasure this weekend. Sunday at noon, enjoy a classic love story with a new twist. It's William Shakespeare's timeless tale, Romeo and Julius. Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? I'm right here. I beseech you. Where? Here, right behind you, Julia. Place yourself. Oh, oh. Oh, thou shut up. Thou likest it and thou knowest it. Then at three, TBS presents one of moviedom's all-time homosexualized classics, Ivan Homo. I've come to see the king. And who are you? Why, I'm his queen. Oh. Ivan Homo. Don't miss it this Sunday. And next week, it's John Wayne in the Flying Lesbonettes. And the children's classic adventure, Homo Alone. TBS, your entertainment alternative for alternative alternatives. 155 at 560 WQM. Happy Monday to you. Mad Dog coming up next. The Humper from my school is at 4. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T and Verizon wireless line. Look at that screenless. There's only one line ringing. No, <laughs> you spoke too soon. What do you mean by that? Like I said, there was one line ringing and now it's gone. Like, <laughs> that's it. <clears throat> well, at least we're making a little bit of a comeback. It's going to take some time, you know, after the holidays. Didn't you feel on Friday like you were talking to yourself except for the uh, four cranks? No, they, they kept me company. They didn't leave me for a second. Like I said, except for the cranks. No, actually, it was all right, surprisingly. WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, what's going on? Let me ask you a question. Is Pharrell going at 940? Because, you know, their morning show wasn't on this morning. Yeah. Do you have any idea about that? No, not that I know of. Not that you know of, because you know, they had, like, ESPN radio, something like that, something they never have. And really? the local guys weren't on, which I found strange. So I thought hmm. maybe Pharrell was going over there or something. Uh, if we uh, find out, you'll be the first to know. And you did hear about Marty Straka, correct? Yes, I did. L.A. Kings. Oh. All right, Neil. Have a great day. Bye-bye. There's a hockey fan. Somebody knows Marty Straka from Marty uh, Schwartz, which is very unusual in South Florida. I, I, you know, I realize that my fellow Panther people out there are going to say, well, how can you say those things if we lost our hockey? You know, like Mo says, you don't want to live in a city that doesn't have professional baseball, you know? That's right. I don't. Why does he say stupid crap like that? Is he just stupid? Absolutely. God. He must have said that a hundred times. You don't want to live in a city. I hate to break the news to you, Mo. Many of us lived in South Florida. I use that in past tense in my case. Many of us lived in South Florida uh, long before there were any Marlins. And World Series and all, two of them now. Uh, life was a lot better then than it is now. Not, not having anything to do with baseball. But it just was. Life in South Florida was much, much, much better. And you know one of the reasons it was much better? What? No Mo. Absolutely. I mean, if we had to have a trade-off, if we, if we could... Had to lose the Marlins, but we had to lose Mo as part of the package. What would we say? Yes. Huh? They'd be lined up 50 miles deep. Make that place in Orange City, that Walmart, pale into insignificance. They'd be lined up 50,000 deep. WQAM. Yeah, a corner from Philly to put in uh, Reading is the second vote, ugliest people in the world. Okay. Where Where is Reading? Well, here's Pennsylvania. You got Philly and you got Pittsburgh, and in the middle is Alabama. It's in the middle of the state. Like Alabama. Right. Alabama. Yep. You mean like in uh, Harrisburg? Yeah, it's right near Harrisburg, and they got big outlets over there. They drive for hours from Jersey just to get to Reading, where these outlets are. It's the ugliest people in the world. You know, you're zoned in, and you're out, you see ugly people, you never notice them, you only notice the good looking people. Mm -hmm. You can walk through this place like it's a ghost town. It just, okay, you know, thanks, Pally. The, the Eagles are going to crush the Dolphins in two weeks, by the way. By the way. All right. From your uh, lips to God's ears. Good luck to you, Pally. Of course, we all know why they built up that Donovan McNabb. Same reason as they built up Steve McNabb <laughs> and all those other dark quarterbacks. Right, Rush? Right, you asshole? God. And you notice the Eagles uh, haven't lost a game since he opened up that big mouth. I do believe I could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. I think they haven't lost a game since Rush opened up his big mouth. And once he opened up his big mouth, he started popping oxys in there, and they've got a, a real tourist. So that's the rumor is that uh, Pharrell is going to be doing mornings. On a 940, you think? 
Uh, whatever. Okay. Well, we need to find out. How come we don't have any inside sources, you know? And, and then the inside source we do have, like Fat Boy, he gives you bogus information about how Mo did the game on uh, Jones Radio last night. Guess what, Fat Boy? As usual, full of crap, full of 375 pounds of big oozing crap. He did the Minnesota-St. Louis Rams game yesterday in St. Louis on uh, that whatever the hell that bogus network is, and uh, still couldn't make it back in time to be on this morning. But I've got a different attitude about that. In fact, I think there's a lot of people in the audience that like to see him do a lot more ball games and miss a lot more mornings. You know what I'm saying? Hey, now. Absolutely. That's a thought. That's an idea. Maybe we start... can just make up ball games every day. Right. That's Why... what Muff said. Why stop at football? In what city in the world are the highest percentage of very, very ugly, grotesque people live? Tampa, 59. Montreal, 41. You can't complain about the good-looking people in Montreal because there aren't any. Cleveland, 38. Paris, 34. Hollywood, Florida, 32. Hialeah, 23. Asheville, 17. Nashville, 13. Ocala, 7. Reading, PA, 6. And Barcelona has got a big pair. Bye, bye, bye. The Neil Rogers Show on 560 WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Howard from Boca. Big deal.